Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the fourth annual Cattlemen's Congress, a show managed by cattlemen for cattlemen. Together, we've created a lasting legacy here in Oklahoma City, and we are so proud to have each and every one of you here with us. Well, it's a big day today in Jim Norick Arena. We're going to get started the right way with our national anthem. If we could please have you all rise. Well, good morning, everyone. Like Kirby said, we'd like to welcome you to the 2024 Cattlemen's Congress. We're going to get things started over here in ring one with your Pold Hereford female show. First up, we've got class one Pold Cow-Calf Pairs. Well, ring two is getting started. First class in the ring will be class 1C here in your cow-calf division for our Angus Super ROV female show. Well, uh, good morning here. It's a pleasure to be here again. Um, look very forward to this day, spending the day with Amy and my fellow breeders out here. 
Starting off in the cow calf show, we got a really nice made cow, very phenotypically correct. Really like how extended she is through her front end. She's a little moderate in size, but plenty of Angus female. A little light in the other area because she's got an April heifer calf behind her. So obviously we're past the weaning point here, but big old stout heifer calf behind her. A lot of substance to this female when you get out behind her. Just a really nice pair. It'll be interesting to see her back out here for the division. Well, congratulations in our first class of cow calves in the Angus ring. First place exhibited by Garrett Green of Powell Butte, Oregon with Green's Alba Mocha 2118. But well, now welcome in class 2C. This will be your second and final class here in the cow calf division. Uh, good morning, uh, Hereford breeders, and welcome back to the show. This uh, promises to be an awful fun day for us here today, and looking forward to it. Uh, Cruz and I had a lot of fun yesterday with the bull show. We're going to kick off today a cow-calf pair, a very important part of our uh, industry for sure. I'd like to actually see more of these shown, and uh, but it does take a lot of work to bring one. I think we got a pair out here that certainly good representation that and a nice cow and probably one that's honestly, to me, outproduced herself here when you look at this uh, May heifer calf that she's got behind her that's got, to me, a lot of good tools and a lot of good pieces to work with. This heifer's got nice bone work underneath. Uh, she's got some length of body and some extension, but yet she's got some power and dimension to her as well. So I think a nice pair, a cow that's uh, doing an excellent job with her, with her calf. And your results over in the Herfin Ring from Class 1, pulled cow-calf pairs. Congratulations. First place goes to entry 3797, WBS Advantage Wilma, 006, owned by Warner Signs of Oakland, Maryland. And this single entry will also be your champion pulled calf cow cow pulled calf cow calf pair. Once again, congratulations to this cow-calf pair and be looking for class two pulled spring heifer calves. Here in your cow calf show, a lot of give and take in these two pairs. Um, we're going to start with the cow with the youngest calf. Uh, the calf Amy and I probably prefer. We like this little heifer calf on the side of the cow. So this cow's done a good job in production. She's extremely long sided and long fronted and balanced and square. Would I like to see a better udder design and more rear third rib cage in this female? I absolutely would. But when you take into consideration the nice heifer calf, she 
she's a dragon behind her. I think this is a nice place to start. Uh, young ladies, Cal that comes in next in line is a big bodied female, a female that's laid in at the blade of her shoulder and square made. When you get her in motion, she's running up a hill pretty hard from her hip to her shoulder. I'd like to drop that shoulder down into her. She's got a big old Mae heifer calf behind her, very powerful built, maybe a little more planar in her design through her front end and down into her chest, but a nice pair, a lot of give and take between those two cows. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring results out of your second class of cow-calf pairs. First place to go to back number 10,521. That's Diamond T. Sarah's Dream, 0206, exhibited by Morgan Hutchins of Charleston, Illinois. Second place in congratulations went to Lily Nutson of Ridgeland, Wisconsin, and Mackenzie Nutson, also of Ridgeland, Wisconsin. But now bring in those first and seconds, and our judges will select their champion reserve cow-calf pairs. Out here for division champion in your cow calf show. A small show, a lot of quality throughout though. Cal that wins the first class. Amy and I really love the phenotype of this cow, the build of this cow. Love how maternal she is through her front end and how long and straight she is down her top and square out her hip. Great balance on this female. Really like the ratio of bone and foot to her body. It balances this female really nicely when you get her in a profile. She's raising an extremely powerful April heifer calf. A little plainer in her front end again, but from there back, she's built really well. With this being an April heifer calf, you really can't see any other design in this female, so that's a, a strike against her, but the, from a phenotype and structural standpoint, we really like this cow and this pair. Um, the second pair, raising an October heifer calf, a little more um, utter under this female, very long-sided, very pretty through that front end, shows in her heifer calf. It's a really nice heifer calf. She's a heifer when you, or a cow when you get her on the profile. She's balanced through her front end, but she starts giving away in the rear third of that body capacity, and, and she has some utter, utter under her, but maybe not the ideal design. Um, there's a lot of give and take between these two pairs, and Amy and I will have one more quick conversation, and she'll go out here and grab your grand and reserve. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring, your champion cow-calf pair coming out of Class 1C. That'll go to Garrett Green with Green's Alba Mocha 2118, and reserve champion will come out of Class 2. Congratulations, Morgan Hutchins of Charleston, Illinois, with Diamond T. Sarah's Dream 0206.
Well, once again, congratulations to our cow-calf exhibitors. We're going to take a brief break for photos. We'll return back with your heifer show with Class 1H. And so it begins. This is, uh, this is one of those deals when you get into these heifer calves. And I've been here as an exhibitor, and you think about uh, how many good ones are in the ring. This is the very first class of the day, and, and we got a ring full of really, really good cattle. Uh, this, this class presents some challenges, there's no doubt about it. But when, uh, when you sort all the things out and you come right down to it, this heifer here that wins the class just hits you hard when she hits the ring. She's got all the power and substance that you had want underneath as far as bone work and mid rib and just her shape and yeah she's far along for her age there's no doubt about it but she blends so nice in through her shoulder she's really nice up in through her front end but yet she has she has plenty of power to go along with it she's just pretty hard to get around in this class i like the way she holds her top line on the move pretty well in comparison to the rest of the cattle i just think it's a really good comfortable place to start with a really nice effort calf Probably the one that has the most future is this one here in second, and I'm not sure that we're getting her best look today. She's a little antsy out here in the ring, but as far as one that you want to talk about a futuristic look and one that's just built extremely well, <clears throat> excuse me, it's this heifer here in second, and, and I, I like this one a tremendous amount, just the, just the way that she's built all the way through. I like the way that she holds her top line better on the move than I do the heifer in third. The heifer in third certainly a little farther along right now. She's got more shape to her, there's no doubt about it. She's got a big sweeping rib cage, and she's got a lot of shape and turn uh, to her when you look at her from the side and from behind. Where she gets into a little bit of trouble for us is when she gets on the move, she just doesn't want to handle her top line quite as right. She wants to just pinch down in her loin and then gets up in the middle of her back just a little bit. <clears throat> so that's what we see with her. But I really like that heifer, especially on the standstill and the extra shape that you get. Here's a stout one coming in next, and I like that about her. Look at the rib cage and look at the outward turn that she has. You get back up on the top side of this heifer. She comes really wide to those pins. I like that a tremendous amount. She just doesn't have quite the balance and look that I see in the cattle above her, but a really nice, stout, powerful built female. Then we come with one here that's a lot prettier uh, than the heifer that just went ahead of her, and I really like the picture that this one paints from the side. This heifer is really green but she is built extremely well. I'm just not sure she's ready for a show here today, but that one there could, uh, could be really tough on down the line. I could see that uh, heifer being extremely good. 
we come in with a little wilder Mark Teffer, and this is one that a lot of people might uh, might really like and gravitate to just because she does have a lot of look and a lot of shape, and she's probably the most different female in the class. I really like the extra muscle that she has. i just like to soften her up, maybe give her a cow ear look if I could. She's a wilder Mark Teffer. That doesn't get her into trouble today. It's just i just like to see her look a little more maternal if I could. Then we come with, here's another heifer that's green. She's just green. Uh, I think in time, this one could have a big, bright future. She's really good in her lines and level her out of her hip. Then we come, actually, the next three cattle here. Uh, these three cattle all have the parts and pieces. They're just not quite ready uh, in comparison to the cattle just above them. Then the cow that was on the cow-calf pair that we began the day with, again, we talked about her. We like her added bone and stoutness. Just doesn't have quite as much look and presence as we find in the cattle above them. Really good class of cattle. Looking forward to the next one. And your results from class two, Pold Spring Heifer Calves over here in the Hereford Ring. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3531, Dunk Pumpkin 37 LET, owned by Crew Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. Second place, entry 31012, BR Amber L176ET, exhibited by Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. Third place goes to Lila Sissel of Elkland, Missouri. Fourth place goes to Joseph Hale of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Fifth place and congratulations goes to Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. Sixth place, Conley Ward, Addison Ward, and Davis Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Seventh place goes to Pied Piper Farms of Hamlin, Texas. Eighth goes to Square G Ranch of Thomas, Oklahoma. Ninth place goes to Addison Kuntz and Jalen Kuntz of Thomas, Oklahoma. And 10th place goes to Warner Signs of Oakland, Maryland. At this time, we have class three pulled spring heifer calves in the ring. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get back started here in your Angus ring. Your first class to hit the ring will be class 1H here in your heifer show. We're looking for one entry in this class. Just a single entry here in the first half or calf class here. Um, really an eye-appealing female when you get on a profile here for this young lady. Extremely balanced, maternal enough through her front end. When you get her in motion, I'd probably like to change how she flexes her hawk and how soft she is in her pastern. So I'd like to make her a little softer there. She gets just a tick rigid. Nice female. Well, congratulations in Class 1H in the Angus Ring. First place will go to Richardson Jewel, 3011, brand known by Ashland Richardson, Lincoln, Missouri. We'll now bring in Class 2H in your Angus Heifer Show. Well, back over in the Hereford ring, for those of you that are just now joining us, we'd like to introduce to you this morning your Hereford judge, Mr. Kyle Collier of Bruno, Idaho. Kyle's the fourth generation on the family ranch where they raise registered Hereford and Angus cattle. Kyle attended junior college in Colby, Kansas, where he was a member of the livestock judging team before transferring to Kansas State University. 
At KSU, he received his bachelor's degree in animal science and was a member of the livestock judging team, where he was high overall individual at the American Royal and a member of the high team. After graduating, he returned to the ranch to work with his family, and in 2004, he was Herdsman of the Year. Collier Herefords has exhibited numerous national champions, and Kyle has judged many national shows of all breeds, including shows in Canada, Mexico, and South America. And assisting in the ring today is his son, Cruz Collier, who represents the fifth generation. Cruz is involved in showing livestock and livestock judging, and just last week he was a member of the high team at the Arizona National Livestock Show. So once again, we'd like to thank Kyle and Cruz for assisting us today in the Open Female Hereford Show. Well, thank you, Garrett. We're going to go ahead and introduce the judges over here in the Angus ring. We'd like to welcome Bruce and Amy Sturzbach. Bruce and Amy have created a legacy of excellence in the world of breeding and showing cattle with 35 years of experience. Sturzbach Cattle Company is a family operation they run with their sons, Dylan and Kate, along with their wives, the Taylors, and growing family, recently enriched by the addition of Taylor, Taylor and Dylan's daughter, Shay. Their focus has always been on breeding and raising high-quality Angus and percentage Semmental cattle, a commitment that has propelled them to success in both junior and open shows, securing victories in all major shows across the country. A crowning achievement is, raising, is the raising of SCC 24 Carat, a living testament to their dedication. This exceptional individual earned the prestigious titles of 22 and 23 Sire of the Year in the Angus breed, leaving an indelible mark across various breeds. There is a genuine pride in witnessing their genetics play a pivotal role in the success stories of breeders across the country. Beyond the show ring, the certs box are advocates for the National Junior Angus Association, recognizing the immense value it brings to the lives of youngsters in the livestock industry. However, their passion does not stop with cattle. For over four decades, Bruce and Amy have been dedicated to breeding AKC Australian Shepherds. This dual commitment to excellence in both cattle and Australian Shepherds showcases a deep love for animals and an unwavering dedication to producing exceptional quality and genetics. Ladies and gentlemen in the Jim Norick Arena, put your hands together and welcome Bruce and Amy Sturzbach to Oklahoma City.
Well, here's an example of uh, a class where, you know, you can say, well, I don't know, these two heifers are way different, and but they're really not. Uh, uh, to me, quality comes in different sizes, okay, and, and we're going to sort quality all day long, and when it comes right down to it, the best two highest quality heifers that are structurally the most right to us are the two heifers that are going to begin this class. Really like the presence, the length of body, the extra extension, uh, the depth of rib, and, and the way that this heifer blends from end to end, and when you ask them to go, yeah, she's one of the biggest heifers in here, but she's also one of the soundest ones. She tracks really true uh, when you watch her go from behind and especially from the side. I like the way that she sets down on those ankles, but yet she's still got some depth of heel to her and stands up uh, like her the way she is from her hawk down to the ground and you certainly like the presence the top line she's just dead level on the move I like that a lot about her she's a really nice female the one that's got a lot of future and I think is really good she comes to us a little more moderate frame uh, sort of package today is this heifer here in second shaped extremely well this is the kind of shape and body uh, that a person's looking for look at the outward turn that this one has the hip and the hind leg and the way that she blends and puts everything together. I just like the skeleton and, the, and, and everything about this female. She gives up some performance, no doubt, some length of body uh, to the heifer that's just ahead of her, but I certainly enjoy the way that that heifer moves around the ring and the way she's made. I think structure is why she goes ahead and places over the next two cattle. I really like both of these heifers an extreme amount on the stand. It's when we put them on the move that I run into a little bit of trouble. This heifer was wanting to kind of roll up on her ankles. You can see her out there. She's wanting to pop in her ankles, and, and that just uh, is something in the class that this tough is going to be get a little bit nitpicky. Uh, that's where she runs into trouble. I like the way this one is on the stand still. She paints a really nice picture from the side. When I step in behind her, when she's on the move, she just wants to walk outside of her skeleton just a little bit, starting to get a little bit bow-legged. Makes me a little bit nervous when we see heifers doing that at this stage of the game, but I certainly enjoy the look that that one has this heifer actually really hit me hard and I liked her a lot when she first came in uh, she's built extremely well I love the mid rib that this one has I like her hind leg extremely well where she ran into some trouble for me we got up in the front side of this heifer and she's wanting to bow out just a little bit and wanting to kind of get a little bit pigeon toed that that's the that's the problem that made me just a little bit nervous about her but I certainly like the build and the look that that one has I think she's extremely good how about having to put a heifer with this much quality this far down in the class? I mean, this class is so deep because this heifer is extremely good. When I get off to the side of her, you know, and she gets stopped for a long time, she just wants to get a little bit lazy right behind her shoulder. Just doesn't hold her top line quite as well as some of the other cattle, but I certainly enjoy that heifer. Great presentation and a really nice look to her. Long-bodied kind of green one here that's got a tremendous front end. Just not sure that we have enough lower rib shape in that one uh, here today she's a little green I think her better days are left ahead of her here's a couple of cattle too that come to us uh, a little greener in terms of condition like the bet if you're comparing these two I just like the cowiness and the maternal look of this heifer in comparison to the heifer just behind her uh, these two cattle are a little antsy you know first time out to the show I'm not sure we're getting their best look here today length of body extension this one has a beautiful front end I just like to see more cattle I'd like to see her have a little more depth and body, a little more maternal look if I could. Then we complete the he uh, class with a heifer that certainly got some depth and body and some maternal look to her, just not quite the style and presence that we find in the cattle above them. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class three, Pold Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3543, KC Patsy's Brandy ET, exhibited by Creighton Carpenter of Leedy, Oklahoma. Second place, entry 3536, GS Dotty West L27ET, owned by McKenna Richardson of Eureka, Kansas. Third place goes to Madeline Grace and Brindley Ann Thompson of Amity, Missouri. Fourth goes to Emma Lynn of Purcell, Oklahoma. Fifth place, Maylee Porch of Lewisburg, Tennessee. Sixth place goes to Kylie Gillespie of Tulin, Illinois. Seventh goes to Grant Ward and Gannon Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Eighth, Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. Ninth place goes to Aiden Barber of Channing, Texas. And tenth goes to Caitlin Miller of Windsor, Missouri. 
Up next, we have class four, Pold Spring Heifer Calves in the ring. Uh, this class of Angus females, uh, a heifer that's going to lead out the class for Amy and I, and we, we really love the good look this one gives you on a profile here. So balanced with plenty of shape and dimension to the center of that rib, so appealing through her front end, very maternal looking, very feminine, really good Angus head on her. She's square out her hips, she travels free and easy. Is she the most powerful one in the class from behind? No, she's not, but she has enough muscle for this class with all the quality she she puts together from a structure standpoint that she's your easy class winner. The heifer is going to come in second, I think follows the type and kind of that one up front, the closest for Amy and I from a structure standpoint. She's laid in well on that blade, she's expanded in that fore rib, not quite the shape and dimension through the center of the rib as the heifer right in front of her, but when you put her in motion, Amy and I thought uh, she traveled well again, she traveled free and easy. When you get behind her, might like to see her be just a tick more powerful too. The powerful heifer in the class is the next one coming in line. Love the bone and foot size of this female. Really good rib shape. More muscle in this female. Still gives you a good maternal look up through the front end. Maybe for Amy and I gets just a little coarser in her shoulder, tighter in her heart. To lay her in at that blade just a little better. Expand her in that fore rib. Uh, the next heifer comes in line. Again, gives you that really eye appeal look when you get on a profile profile here, really extended and nice through her front end and square down her top with enough rib shape and dimension. For us, when you put her in motion, she gets just a little restricted off both ends. Like to see her cover her track just a little better as we get her in motion. Uh, gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line, a big old power female when you get out behind her. But she's a heifer, if you see her here, when you get her in motion, gets a little broken in that loin. Like to change the way she moves in that hawk as she goes. The next two heifers in line, powerful built females, but they need some structure changes to get them up any higher today. Well, congratulations over in the Angus ring, your second class, the Heifers, first place. We go to back number 10,526 at Selden Rest, Sandy Joe, 31-14. Exhibited by Allison Friesen of Arnett, Oklahoma. Second place, and congratulations, go to Brant Pettigrew of Columbia City, Indiana. Third place was exhibited by Annalena Lugo of Bakersfield, California. Fourth place went to Lauren Walter of Aviston, Illinois. Fifth place will go to Grant Ward, Oak Grove, Missouri. Sixth place and congratulations to Asa Anderson of Chipley, Florida. And seventh place exhibited by Dylan Casaroto. Now in the ring class, 3-H here in your Angus Female Show.
Well, this is a really tough class. There's no doubt about it. I, I think we got a ring full of really good cattle. It's really hard to pull some of those heifers that are over there along the wall, but we got to make some decisions. And when it comes right down to it, uh, the most different heifer, the most unique, the stoutest, the most powerful cattle in the class is this heifer that's going to win. Uh, tons of body, tons of bone, uh, and the heifer actually is very structurally sound. When you walk her, uh, watch her walk around the ring and watch her go, uh, she covers her track. She does so extremely well, and for having that much power, uh, you got to admire that, that female. Now, I'll be the first one to admit I think that heifer's got the most flesh on her of any heifer probably in the entire class, and I would tone her down. And I, I'd green that one up quite a bit because I don't think she needs to be uh, quite that fleshy to be this good because she's stout enough on her own. Uh, but I think that heifer could be toned up just a little bit, and that one is going to be extremely good. She paints a really nice picture from the side. The wild marked heifer here that comes next is probably the most like her in terms of just stoutness and power and length of body. I like the way she holds her top line on the move. She's laid in extremely nice in her shoulder. Uh, this is just a really high quality, nice individual uh, that's got a really nice look from the side. Probably the most maternal looking one and a female that I certainly enjoy looking at is the one here in third. This heifer's got a ton of cow power written all over. I just like the way that one's made. She's extremely sound at the ground, just not quite the wow factor, maybe not quite the balance and look of the heifers above them. I like this one a lot right here on the standstill. Love the shape and sweep of this one's rib and the turn that she has from the side. She just wants to toe out just a little bit up in her front end. When I watch her go off her hind leg, she wants to just come a little bit more closed, uh, but I think a really, really high quality female. This one here has got a lot of presence and balance and style, and Cruz really likes this heifer a lot, and I do too. Uh, you know, you get this one parked and you watch her go around the ring. Uh, this is an extremely good heifer. Where she ran into some trouble for me is just that rear third underneath and her rear ribbon flank. Just like to drop her down there if I could just a hair. Give her a little bit more punch and power in terms of bone work if I could. But that's a really nice heifer. Got a lot of shape up high. Then we come here with another one that's got a stream amount of look. Uh, just not quite the power and, and uh, uh, just overall weight and performance that we see in the cattle above them. Really long bodied sound one here that's coming next. Again, not quite the balance and eye appeal. Then we come with a heifer that completes the class and it's a shame to put a heifer this maternal, this good looking with that much pigment uh, at the end of the class. She toes out a little bit and doesn't have quite the shape that we see in the cattle above them. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class four, Cold Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3557, CFCC HPF Finney 2126L, exhibited by Catherine Coleman of Modesto, California. Second place goes to entry 3558, BAG Geneva 310ET, owned by Bo Ann Graves of Chillicothe, Missouri. Third place goes to B&C Cattle Co. of Miami, Texas. Fourth place goes to Cobble Lewis and Coven Lewis of Ryan, Oklahoma. Fifth place goes to Brazos Heck and Taos Heck of Fitzhugh, Oklahoma. Sixth place, congratul congratulations, goes to Dustin Denton of Blue Rapids, Kansas. Seventh place goes to Tegan Routon of Corsicana, Texas. And eighth goes to Innisfil Farm of Madison, Georgia. At this time, we have class five Pold Spring Heifer Calves in the ring. Here in the Angus side, again, a logical place to start for Amy and I, a heifer again. When you get her on the profile here, gives you that really good Angus female look with a nice head in her. She's really long down her side, long out her hip. She's very balanced. When you put her in motion, Amy and I prefer the way she puts all four feet down. The, the look she gives you on a profile with enough shape and dimension to her rib, enough muscle in her, just the balanced, complete heifer in the class. The heifer that comes in next in line. Amy and I like from a, a female standpoint of how maternal she is through her front end. Good uh, barrel to the center of the body of this female. She's probably just a little bigger in the center of that rib with a little more shape than the class winner. When you get her in motion, not near as flexible off those rear two to be able to get ahead of the heifer that beats her today. Uh, the stout built heifer with a really good look comes in next in line here. The biggest bone, biggest foot heifer with the most muscle in her. Nice balance again in this female with a, a very 
very maternal front end. Again, when you put her in motion, she just doesn't flex and travel the ground as free and easy as the two heifers above her. Same can be said for the young man that comes next in line. Again, from a stoutness standpoint, with some rib shape and muscle, she checks those boxes, big bone, big footed, just like the heifer in front of her. Again, when we get her in motion, just got to change the way she handles these rear two to get her any higher today. A little more feminine heifer comes in next in line, good balance here. But again, the heifer, as we get her in motion, just needs to be more flexible and reach off both ends a little bit. Um, we come to a big, powerful heifer here with bone again, but for Amy and I, gets a little coarser in her makeup. When you view her from a three-quarter angle, a little more shoulder in this female, a little core or a little tighter in that fore rib, and two heifers below her that we just need to change structurally to get them up there any higher. Well, congratulations. Back in the Angus ring, results out of Class 3H. First place, we'll go to Sadie Plagg of Guthrie, Oklahoma, with Diamond T. Georgina, 31.99. Second place, we'll go to Casey Lee Meyer, Blue Hill, Nebraska, with Dal Porto, Queen, 35.79. Third place in that class, exhibited by Cato Craft, Anna Darko, Oklahoma. Fourth place, we'll go to Camden Daniel Upchurch of Lineville, Alabama. Fifth place went to Gavin Cool Layton of Edmond, Oklahoma. Sixth place and congratulations will go to Cody Robert York of Palestine, Illinois. Seventh place exhibited by Garrett Green. Eighth place in that class and congratulations will go to Ian Norman. Now in the ring, class 4H here in your Angus female show. Another nice class over here in the Hereford side. It became a little more placeable uh, than some of the other classes that we've had, and so we uh, whipped right along here. The heifer that wins this class, uh, to me, does so at the ground. Uh, both these cattle are really good. They're both a lot alike in terms of their type and kind and build, but uh, where the heifer that wins this class excels is just from the ground. She's got more foot, she's got more power, she's got more bone, and then you follow that up, she's so correct in her top line on the move, just a really nice, solid heifer to win this class. Really like this one as well. She's got a lot of the same qualities, maybe just not quite the bone work. Didn't see her uh, quite as good at the surface as the heifer that won the class, but this heifer's awful green. Uh, she's got a lot of future and a really good look to her as well. Another really green one here that's built extremely well, just just not quite ready uh, for the show today. She's wanting to fight the halter a little bit, but uh, when you really study this one, this is a really extremely high quality heifer. Next heifer that comes in line has got a lot more performance, a lot more length of body and power. Uh, here's a female though, for me, just gets a little bit too straight on both ends of her skeleton. She wants to get a little straighter up in that shoulder, doesn't want to reach quite as well and hits the ground a little harder. That's why she's there. Then we come with the heifer next, and this is a long bodied really correct topped one just like to drop her down in her midrib I could see this heifer maybe having a little too much leg and elevation uh, I see that female getting pretty big and just kind of outgrowing her skeleton then we come with a real maternal built kind of heifer here that's got a nice uh, depth of rib and body she just doesn't have quite the style and presence that we find in the cattle above them nice class and back over in the Hereford ring your results from class 5 pulled spring heifer calves Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3568, BACC 9313, Cash and Harley 327 ET, owned by Suter Clark of Gretna, Virginia. Second place goes to entry 3577, SG Miss Lacey L55, owned by Hannah Pembroke of Beggs, Oklahoma. Third place goes to Aiden Barber of Channing, Texas. Fourth place goes to Addison Kuntz and Jalen Kuntz of Thomas, Oklahoma. Fifth, Alexis Killing of Bowling Green, Missouri. And sixth place goes to Timber Hula of Creston, Nebraska. At this time, we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserve Division I Pold Spring Heifer Calf.
really nice first division that we got out of here to evaluate and that's what uh, you actually have to do is evaluate because there's so many good cattle out here and they're then they come to us in different shapes and sizes there's no doubt but when it comes right down to it uh, these are the cattle that structurally put the things together and, and do the most things right i really like this one uh, that won that first class i mean she is built extremely well she's really nice and angular up in through her front end like her slope to her shoulder i really like the way this female moves around the ring you step in behind her and i realized she was the first one up in line and didn't want to really go but man i like the way that that uh, the structure of this female from the ground up i think is is extremely good i like this female a lot in second uh, that won that second class length of body extension she's really really level especially i probably enjoy watching this heifer on the move a touch more than i do when she's standing uh, she stands sometimes she wants to let that top line down just a little bit but when you put this one on the move she is just long level extremely good right behind her shoulders and uh, I, I really enjoy watching that heifer on the move good angles to her shoulders she reaches and strides really well the most different female in the class or in this division is definitely this heifer in third power shape bone uh, she's got as much stoutness as you ever want in a female she she may be just a little bit too much and like I said before I'd like to tone her down in her condition just a little bit I'm not sure that heifer is just quite my speed and she's the most different one but hey she's unique I like her she's got a lot of good pieces great breeding tool there then the heifer that won that last class just did so because she was the structure uh, the female that moved the best the female that's the freshest and greenest in terms of her condition probably in this entire lineup and I appreciate that about her but when you get her back out here and look at her she may be just not quite as ready uh, for the show today but I think that one's got a big future so at the end of the day I think it's really close and really tough uh, but we found one that we like quite a lot, and uh, we'll show you which one that is now. And congratulations, your champion out of the first division of Pold Spring Heifer Calves goes to entry 3543, Casey Patsy's Brandy E.T., Exhibited by Creighton Carpenter of Lee. Oh, excuse me. I've got a correction there. That goes to entry 3531, Dunk Pumpkin 307LET, owned by Crew Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. And your reserve champion from Division One goes to entry 3543, Casey Patsy's Brandy E.T., exhibited by Creighton Carpenter of Leedy, Oklahoma, out of Class Three.
Really good class of cattle here, and one thing that uh, we never wavered from is starting with this heifer. This is a heater. This is a really good one right here that we got in the ring. Built extremely well, body shape, bone, good fronted, sound, probably the soundest heifer in the entire class too. So pretty easy for us to begin with this heifer. You could say everything you want about her, and she's awful good. Next heifer in line is the next one that I'd just like to own. I love the maternal look, the cowiness that this one has, depth of rib and body and just shape. She just ran into a really tough class and a really good one here today, but I like that heifer a tremendous amount. And second, she glides around the ring. She's extremely sound in terms of her structure. Really pretty one here that comes in next and probably got just a bit more eye appeal than the heifer that just left the ring. Just not quite the stoutness and power, not quite the shape and turn uh, that we see in the heifer just ahead of her. Here's a really good look one, looking one too. These heifers are a lot alike. Uh, this one has a lot of balance and look and you certainly like the way this one's laid in through her shoulder and her front end. Just doesn't have quite the power that we see in the top two cattle here today. But extremely good looking one. Young lady does a great job getting her parked and set up. This next heifer here is one that uh, when you read her from the side and you, and you study her angles and look at the boldness that she has to her rib and especially up high, she's extremely stout. She's got some bone. This one runs into trouble for me at the ground uh, for all that shape that she has up high. She just doesn't have enough base width in her skeleton for me here today, but a really nice heifer. Then we come with some cattle here in the next uh, three holes. All of them, all these heifers are extremely good. This one's got a lot of shape. This this one's got a lot of power to her, just doesn't have quite the balance and eye appeal and presence. Then we come with a heifer that's just a little behind in terms of weight per day and performance, but she certainly got the right shape and she comes to us in a really nice moderate package. Here on the Angus side, uh, again, a heifer for Amy and I that really sorted herself to the top, I guess, easily for Amy and I. Really great look here in the profile, very balanced. Heifer's really nice when you get out behind her, how she's expanded in her forerib, how good her spine comes out of her shoulder, and down her top, she's square, she's got plenty of muscle in her, but not too much that it causes her to be coarse. She's a very smooth made heifer that for Amy and I traveled the freest and easiest in the ring and a, a nice class winner. I think a young lady that comes in next here, I think just falls the type and kind we've been looking for all day when this young lady gets this heifer put together in a profile, really good rib shape and dimension in the center of that rib cage with good balance. She's a heifer with a nice amount of bone and foot under with some muscle. When you get out behind her, she doesn't disappoint you. She's not overwhelming, but it all goes together in a unique, uh, smooth package. When you get her in motion, she's not quite as free and easy and flexible off those rear twos. The heifer's going to win the class. Young lady's heifer that comes in next in line. Really good look on a profile here. Very maternal and female looking. Probably the most impressive heifer of the top three from behind. Really wide down her top, really wide at her hooks. Plenty of muscle in this female. Again, when we get her in motion, I'd like to see her just be a little more flexible, reach better off both ends. Young ladies, a heifer that comes in next. Larger framed heifer, a lot of heifer here for a May heifer. Again, gives you that really good profile look, strong down her top, square out her hip. Not quite as neat in her chest as the heifers above her, but what gets her here is she's a narrower based heifer. She's more restricted in that four flank as if you were from that three quarter angle. She's just a little steeper in the slope of that shoulder, a little steeper in that knee than I'd like to see. Another uh, nice heifer comes in next in line here. Great balance, really stout heifer, plenty of muscle on top and squareness in this female. Doesn't quite have the explosive rib in the center of that rib cage as some of the heifers right in front of her. But as again, as we get this heifer in motion, I need to change her off that front end, give her more slope to that shoulder, a little more set to the knee. Big old powerful female comes in here next in line with a really good rib shape, really nice front end, but needs to be free or knees here as we go about the ring. Uh, uh, some structure issues for the heifers on down the line. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from class six, Pold Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3578, 
KJ746D, COCO Madonna 201 LET, owned by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Second place, back number 3579, SLC7H Roxy 11L, owned by Shelby Seamer of Siegel, Illinois. Third place goes to Wheeler Farm of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Fourth, Paisley Van Horn of Morgantown, Indiana. Fifth place goes to Wyatt, Madeline, and Cooper Weber of Wamego, Kansas. Sixth place goes to Addison and Conley Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Seventh place goes to Elijah and Elizabeth Crum of Anadarko, Oklahoma. And eighth place, Brooke and Elena Al of Auburndale, Wisconsin. At this time, we have class seven pulled spring heifer calves in the ring. Well, congratulations back in the Angus ring before our first division. This is class 4-H. First place exhibited by Annalise Mead of Barnett, Missouri with Dameron Northern Miss 390. Second place in that class will go to Allie Perry of Fayetteville, Tennessee. Third place and congratulations, Jelani King of Wacomus, Oklahoma. Fourth place and congratulations, Pepper Elmore, also Wacomus, Oklahoma. Fifth place was exhibited by Jenna Reeder of Trenton, Missouri. Sixth place and congratulations goes to Allie Hartle of Medill, Oklahoma. Seventh place and congratulations to Amberlynn Christianbury. Eighth place in that class was exhibited by Ariel Elliott. Ninth place exhibited by Lily Knutson. And tenth place will go to Cecilia Ann Hulse. Now in ring two, we have your first and seconds to compete for our junior heifer calf division one.
Really tough uh, class, and uh, these three heifers, I could see you jumbling them up a number of ways because they all three have a lot of quality. I think at the end of the day, uh, what does it for me is just how good and how stout and how powerful, ribbed, and depth uh, that this female has, but what she just sets up so nice from the side, holds her top line dead level on the move, and and when I watched her go away from me, I wish she would have a touch more base width, but then I actually watched all three of them go away from me, and they all kind of were tracking about the same uh, from behind, so I couldn't get on her too bad for that. And then when you just step off to the side of her and look at the picture that she paints, the cowie looking rib that she has, yet the angles to her shoulder and the way that she sets her hawk down uh, from the side. I just think this is a really fault-free, really nice female that's going to win this class. Big, stout, powerful one is uh, sitting here in second. And I thought about starting with this heifer. There's no doubt uh, we actually have a heifer that's a lot like this one at home that I like an extreme amount. Just look at the bone, the foot, the power, the dimension that this one has in her. When you get off to the side of these two cattle, this one just wanted to come apart a little bit more uh, right behind her shoulder blade. I'm not sure I like her quite as well up in her tail head and back in through her hooks and pins. Uh, when he gets her stops and gets her uh, loin down, she certainly does level that top line out. But you certainly got to like the running gear, the stoutness, the power, and the shape that you find in this one. Probably the one that has uh, some of the most future is this heifer that's here in third. Just today, I need a little bit more cattle to compete with those two uh, just above them, but I love the profile, love the balance, the structure, the top line, just the overall integrity. That's a really nice female that I think is going to have a big, bright future. The next one coming in line has a bit more uh, shape and power than we see uh, in the heifer just above her, just maybe not quite the balance and eye appeal. Really actually like this heifer that's coming in next just because of her shape, her rib shape, her overall dimension, her top. You get back in through that hip. She may be just carrying a little extra condition today. Doesn't see quite the eye appeal that we do in the cattle above them. Then we have a real broody, maternal looking female that's coming in next. She just needs to be prettied up a little bit if we could give her a touch more balance. Two cattle that are going to come in next uh, certainly have the look and the eye appeal. Uh, these two just, just not quite ready here today. Uh, a little greener in terms of their appearance, but a really good class of cattle. here in the first division of the Angus. Uh, let's give these exhibitors a nice round of applause. Um, outstanding set of females out here. Uh, Amy and I think uh, these class winners are really good. Some nice seconds back there. Uh, for Amy and I, though, this comes down to a couple heifers out here, although I will uh, talk about all of them quick. The heifer that won the first uh, class uh, single entry, Nice uh, female with a lot of future for this young lady. Big bone, big footed kind of female. As you get her in motion, does not travel as free and easy as the rest of the heifers out here in the ring. The heifer that comes in next paints you that really elegant, uh, beautiful female profile in this, this heifer. Uh, a rib shape and dimension in the center of that rib. Really eye appealing through her front end. Travels really free and easy as she goes about the ring, sets down all four feet really well. Probably the least powerful female of the four heifers out here as you view her from behind, but enough power for a young female this age that's built this well. Um, the heifer that wins the third class gives you a great look on the profile here when this young lady gets her set up. Really appealing through her front end. Plenty of rib shape in this heifer. Enough muscle when you get behind her. Amy and I thought when you got her in motion, that this heifer is really sound, but we don't know if she's near as sound as the two heifers on either side of her. But a heifer that's definitely in common competition, uh, a really a, a, another high quality female. The female that won the last class, Amy and I really love the mass and power in this female. She's really big top. She's easily the thickest heifer of the four class winners out here. She has a tremendous rib shape in her. She's got a very maternal front end. She is quite sleek necked as maybe the two heifers right in front of her, maybe not. 
but enough for Amy and I. Uh, she's a heifer that puts a lot of things together really well. Love the power. Definitely in consideration to win this division. If I could change her just a tick, I'd probably like to flex her hawk just a little more as she's standing right here set up. I think as she goes about the ring, she moves plenty good for Amy and I. But there's a couple heifers out here for Amy and I that we went back and forth about. Um, so with that said, I'll hang up the mic here and Amy will get your division winner reserve. Well, congratulations over in the Angus ring, your first division here in our Heifer Show champion coming out of class 2H. That was Allison Friesen, Arnett, Oklahoma, with Selim Rest, Sandy Joe, 31-14. And congratulations, reserve on that division coming out of class 4-H. That was exhibited by Annalise Mead of Barnett, Missouri with Dameron Northern Miss, 390. We're now going to welcome in class 5 here in your next division of the Angus Female Show. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from class 7, Pold Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3598, GS Rosemary L17ET, exhibited by Lauren Frederick of Hutchison, Kansas. Second place, back number 3603, TR1816FAY 25LET, owned by Jarrett Worrell of Mason, Texas. Third place, and congratulations, goes to Claiborne Perry of Madison, Missouri, excuse me, Madison, Mississippi. Fourth place goes to Graham, Grady, and Gage Kramer of Waxahachie, Texas. Fifth place goes to Brooke Bain of Lawton, Oklahoma. Sixth place, and congratulations, goes to Pied Piper Farms of Hamlin, Texas. Seventh place goes to Carlisle Brayman of Refugio, Texas. And eighth place goes to Peyton and Paige Henderson of Buffalo, Missouri. At this time, we have Class 8, Pold Spring Heifer Calves in the ring. At the conclusion of this class, we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserve for the Division 2 Pold Spring Heifer Calves. We got a stout, powerful, good one that puts a lot of good things together at the ground. Uh, very big footed, big boned. Uh, she's got a lot of shape and sweep and turn to her rib. Uh, and I think where she excels the heifer in second is just her upper rib shape and just the look that she gives down through her lower quarter and stifle. I just see enough more cattle there. Just a really nice shaped female that's going to win this class that's uh, fairly sound at the ground. Real maternal looking one that's real cowy that's going to come in next. I like her depth of rib. I really like the center of this female a tremendous amount. I'd just like to give her a bit more shape if I could. Back in through her hip and down through her lower quarter. She just needs a little more power. 
The heifer that's coming in next here, here's a long-bodied, really good-looking one that comes to us in really fresh condition. I like the freshness and the uh, hair coat that this female has on her. She's really long and level, uh, just doesn't have quite the power of the heifer that wins the class and maybe not quite the maternal look of the next one. Then we come with the heifer here next again, another real fresh one that's real nice and angular up through her front end. You like that about her? Again, I'd like to see a little bit more depth, and especially through a rear ribbon flank just give her a touch more uh, bone if I could I really like this heifer coming in next and a young lady does an extremely good job showing this one uh, I really like the shape and the outer turn to this one's rib cage and the view that she gives me from the side she just uh, didn't quite hold herself together as well on the move maybe like to refine her just a touch up in through her front end real long bodied one here that comes next and again uh, very fresh in terms of her condition uh, she wanted to just dip in her loin a little bit i'd like to see a touch more rear rib and flank in this one but i certainly appreciate the freshness and the condition that she's in another long bodied one that's really correct in her top line needs a little bit more mid rib if i could and then we come with the cattle that probably does have a touch more mid rib just doesn't have quite the balance and look of the heifer just above her nice classic cattle And your results from Class 8, Pold Spring Heifer Calves over in the Hereford Ring. Congratulations. First place goes to entry 30623, TR 6624 Celeste 16L ET, exhibited by Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon. Second place goes to entry 3613, KJ 746D Coco Liberty 126 LET, exhibited by Elliot Byers of Mason, Michigan. Third place and congratulations goes to Square G Ranch of Thomas, Oklahoma. Fourth place, Drew Ballard of Inman, Kansas. Fifth place goes to Ava and Brimley Doig of St. Paul, Indiana. Sixth place goes to Mabry Howard of Allen, Oklahoma. Seventh, Bianca and Maya Beaven of Platteville, Wisconsin. And eighth place, Elijah and Elizabeth Crum of Anadarko, Oklahoma. At this time, we've got your first and seconds back in the ring, and we'll select your champion and reserve champion, Division II Pold Spring Heifer Calf. I think we have another really nice division of cattle out here to look at. It's something that's a little more unique. I guess I've, and maybe it's happened before, but I don't ever recall having two divisions of uh, pulled spring heifer calves. And that uh, it goes to show you how many good cattle that we've sorted out through here today already. And I, I tell you, I think we got three really, really high quality individuals to look at here. Uh, for this division lineup. I'm not going to go back through and talk about every single one of them. We just talked about them a little bit. I think there's a heifer in here. It's a combination female, and I think she's a heater. She's awful good. Chris is going to show you which one we like to win this division. And congratulations, your champion Division II Pold Spring Heifer Calf goes to entry 3578, KJ 746 Coco Madonna 201 LET, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma.
And congratulations, your reserve champion Division II Pold Spring Heifer Calf goes to entry 3623, TR6624 Celeste 16LET, exhibited by Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon. Up next, be looking for Class 9 Horned Spring Heifer Calves.
tough class here, uh, first class of horn, spring heifer calves, and the one that uh, hits us the hardest and comes to the top is this young female. She's about a uh, almost, a, actually these are the two youngest heifers in the class, and that's why we kind of took that into consideration a little bit, especially the heifer in second, you know, she's a uh, a June, she's almost uh, a month younger than the heifer uh, that was at the end of the class. So when you consider the ages and everything, uh, this female that comes to the top for us does so fairly handily just because of her overall look, her balance, her shape, and just her type and kind. She's really sound at the ground. If I could change her just a little bit, and if you want to get nitpicky on her, uh, when she's on the move, she wants to roach up in that top just a little bit right in the middle of her back. But I'll tell you what, we got a stick person here. When she gets her stopped and then she gets her loin down, uh, she looks awful good from the side. I think uh, the young lady does an extremely good job presenting that female. Then we have this heifer here in second, and to me, she comes to us with the next least amount of faults, just a really complete design one, and like I said, she comes to us in a moderate frame package, but she's also just a June, but you study the way that this one's made. She's green in terms of her condition. I think this one has a lot of future just because of her balance and scope and just overall profile. I think a really nice heifer there in second. Then we come with a real long bodied one that's got a tremendous amount of length and extension up through her front end. She's really long and level down that top line. This female maybe just didn't handle her hind wheels quite as well when you get her stopped. I'd like to see her touch more correct from her hawk down to the ground. Real pretty fresh one again that comes in here next uh, like the length of body she holds her top line just dead level on the move I like the top side of this female tremendous amount where she runs into trouble just a little more mid rib touch more lower rib cage in that heifer I think we could like her a touch more because she's awful good looking Next one that comes up in line, I do, do, trying to decide between these two cattle. I just went ahead and used a heifer that I see enough more weight per day of age and just performance and overall stoutness in the female that's going to come next. Again, she might just not have quite the depth of rib and body, wants to get a little straighter off that shoulder. This is a really nice female that's going to come next. I just wish there was a touch more of her because she's certainly maternal looking. She's got a really good cow presence, and I like that about her. I just like to see a touch more cattle if I could. Really nice heifer. Heifer that comes in next, again, a real long-bodied, real fresh-haired one. Uh, again, I'd like to see a little bit more depth of rib and body in this female. Just refine her up through her head and neck a touch if I could. And your results from class nine, Horn Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3803, CLNS Phoenix 2272, owned by Claire Cricket and Sierra Collins of Chattanooga, Oklahoma. Second place, entry 31013, BR Amber L179ET, owned by Barbara Ranch of Channing, Texas. Third place goes to Amberlyn Christenberry of Star, South Carolina. Fourth place, and congratulations, goes to Ethan Eppenshield of Marshalltown, Iowa. Fifth place, Emma Lynn of Purcell, Oklahoma. Sixth place goes to Leighton Strait of Fairmont, Oklahoma. And seventh, Gracie Gist of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. At this time, we have class 10, Horn Spring Heifer Calves entering the ring. Uh, here in the Angus ring for a minute, uh, and, I, and I'm going to tell a quick story. Uh, if you saw Amy looking at her phone um, this morning at 444, I got a text on my phone. My truck was getting broken to in Denver, and um, I have an alert, so I called my sons right away. It took a few calls to get them up, and they went down. And um, yeah, our truck had been, our one truck had been broken too. Well, Amy was just getting texts uh, and calls from my oldest son, and why? They stole our registration book and our health papers out of our truck. So that's why he was calling me in a panic, because I got a whole string in Denver and no registration papers for him. So 
<laughs> it's been an interesting day. Uh, for Amy and I in this class, I'll be honest with you, a, a tremendous amount of give and take and maybe not an ideal heifer for Amy and I in this class. We really like the look this female gives you, love the rib shape, love how sound she is, the big body in this female. When you get out behind her, not disappointing, she's really wide down her top, she's got plenty of muscle, good bone and foot, travels free and easy. Is she a little looser made in her upper shoulder and maybe a little tighter right coming out of that shoulder? Probably is just a little bit. But when you view her from a standpoint of that rib shape and the way she travels the ring and the muscle in her, this was the logical place for Amy and I to start. Striking female here on a profile in second, longer sided, larger frame kind of heifer, good bone and good foot under this heifer. For Amy and I, where this heifer probably needs time, she needs a little more time to mature because she's a narrower based heifer, a little more restricted in her chest and her floor flank, a little narrower from behind. So consequently, when we get out behind this heifer, for her frame and that, we just like to see a little more punch, a little more of this female. A structurally correct female, just a little too numero, narrow base for us. The heifer that comes in next in line, again, like a lot of things about the structural makeup of this female, probably a little more center rib cage than the heifer right in front of her, but a heifer that's got a little more condition on her, but still a little more refined in her makeup. If we could make this heifer maybe just a tick stouter from a bone and foot standpoint, and maybe when you view her from behind, we could probably move this one up, but an another nice heifer. Um, the heifer comes in next in line, a bigger bone, bigger footed female, impressive from behind, gives you a balanced look from a profile, not near the rib shape in the center of this uh, female's rib, not near the shape and dimension to it as you view it from a three-quarter angle. And Amy and I thought, probably the heaviest conditioned of those top four heifers and still was lacking quite the rear third rib cage of the heifers right in front of them. Gentlemen's heifer come in next in line, probably the greenest heifer in the class. She's a heifer that when this young man gets her set up, she gives you a great profile, good down her top, square out her hip. When you get behind her, she again is a heifer that gets flatter in her makeup. She's just flatter in that hip and down into that stifle, just like the give a little more punch and power to this female. Uh, the heifer comes in next tonight and has that huge body we like, uh, but she's a heifer if we put her in motion, like her to flex off those rear two to get her any higher. Gentleman's heifer that comes next, extremely stout, a lot of muscle in this female. A female that gets maybe a little coarser in her head and shows that in her chest. She's a female we'd like to see just flex a little off, better off those rear two. As we get on the line here, heifers, we just need to change structurally to get them any higher today. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring results out of class 5H. First place exhibited by Shelby Hulse of Hannibal, Missouri. For those of you following along in your book, that was an ad back number 10572. Second place in that class, and congratulations. We'll go to Josie Brooke Phillips and Circle M Farm, Rockwell, Texas. Third place, and congratulations to Blair Heath of Cooksville, Maryland. Fourth place, exhibited by Ella Marie Jordan, Savannah, Missouri. Fifth place, Suter Clark, Gretna, Virginia. Sixth place, exhibited by Lucy Carmen of Laverne, Oklahoma. Seventh place, went to Emily Grace Manning of New Albany, Mississippi. Eighth place, and congratulations, will go to Braden Mason. Ninth place, exhibited by Denton Daryl Cook. Tenth place in that class, exhibited by Sachi Dowling of Fairgrove, Missouri. 11th place went to Cassidy Eagleburger, and 12th place exhibited by Gara Green. We're now welcoming in class 6H here in your Angus female show.
What a good class of cattle here, and I think these top five or so heifers are extremely good. Today, this is how they're going to be placed. I'm not sure that it'll always be this way, but I think uh, when we come right down to it, one thing I never did uh, waver from doing is starting with this heifer that wins the class. She's just the most complete. She's the best in terms of her structure and balance. I like her behind her shoulder. I like the way she holds her top line on the move. Really enjoy watching this heifer move from the side, the way she picks up that hind leg, covers her track. Balance, proportions, a uh, nice heifer from the side. Come with this heifer here in second. I, I like this hip female a tremendous amount as well. She's really nice up in through that shoulder, laid in nice there. She's really nice up in through her front end. They like the depth, the rib, and the body that she has. Uh, like I said before, maybe just doesn't come to us in quite as complete a package as the female that wins the class, but that's an awfully high quality female. Big stout one that's going to come in here next. And Cruz like this heifer a tremendous amount. And I do too. I see what he's seeing. This heifer's got a lot of weight per day and age and performance. For me, when she gets on the move, she just wants to roach up in the middle of her back just a little bit. I like to see her just a little bit better behind her shoulders as we compare her to the heifers just ahead of her. But it's a high quality class and uh, really good cattle above her. I think that's a really nice female. Then we come with a heifer here next, and one that I liked a tremendous amount from the standstill, and that's why we left her out in the lineup for uh, as long as we did. When we asked those cattle to go on that last turn, uh, this is a heifer that just hits the ground a little harder uh, on her hind two for us today. I'd like to just free her up and flex her just to touch better on her hind wheels if we could. Really nice, moderate heifer that's got a lot of depth of rib and volume like the outer turn to this heifer this is a good looking female i just wish there was a little bit more cattle i'd just like to stretch that one out touch more if i could just stretch her out in her hip stretch her out up in her front end a little bit the one that's got a lot of future is this heifer that's coming in next and this is one that i could see moving up the line a lot in the future today she's just a little bit too green just gives up too much power and too much performance to the cattle above them that's a really nice high quality female there really good one here that's uh you know greener in terms of her condition just not i'm not sure we're getting this heifer's best look today she's wanting to be pretty antsy out in the ring wants to get a little higher in her tail head but that comes with the territory of being a little bit greener here today then a really nice mark good pigmented female that comes in next that's certainly got some maternal qualities uh, she's just a female that gives up some balance and eye appeal to the cattle above them here's a really nice fresh one here and this is a heifer that when she's on the move i actually Actually like her a whole lot more than when she's on the standstill this one just wants to when she stops she wants to come apart behind her shoulders just uh, doesn't give me quite as a balanced look from the side as the cattle above her real long bodied one again uh, that's got some really good qualities she's very sound in terms of her structure she just needs a little bit more refinement up through her front end then we come with a really pretty cattle here that's going to complete the class probably a little nicer up in for through her front end she just doesn't have quite the weight per day of age stoutness and performance that we find in the cattle above them and back over in the Hereford ring your results from class 10 horn spring heifer calves congratulations first place goes to entry 3821 KD lucky for you 363 let owned by Gunner and Fallon Gore of Madras Oregon second place goes to entry 3826 HMC Little Willow 405 V owned by Mason and Landry Allen of Nakona, Texas. Third place goes to Mark Lofton of Wesson, Mississippi. Fourth place goes to Riley Rhodes of Carlinville, Illinois. Fifth place, and congratulations, Raylan Unwin of Winniewood, Oklahoma. Sixth, Crew and Kara Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. Seventh goes to Riley Barber Matheny of Channing, Texas. Eighth place, and congratulations, goes to Emerson and Briar Fleischer of Knoxville, Illinois. Ninth, Lily Miles of Morgantown, Indiana. Tenth place goes to Brooke and Elena All of Auburndale, Wisconsin. And eleventh, and congratulations, goes to Braxton Mims of Lorenzo, Texas. At this time, we have class 11, Horn Spring Heifer Calves entering the ring.
really a nice class of Angus females, but again, some major differences here. Uh, Amy and I are going to start with this heifer that puts a lot of together things really, really nice in a unique package. Is she overwhelming from any standpoint? No, she's not. But there's enough rib shape and dimension, enough muscle. She's square. She's built. She's feminine through her head and neck. Is she as extended as a heifer right behind her? Probably not. But she's a heifer when you put her in motion. We like to slope to her shoulder the way her knee sets a little better than the heifer that comes in right behind her. A larger framed heifer is going to come in right behind her. Love the look of this female when this young lady gets her put together in a profile. Absolutely, when she came out in class first, Amy and I thought she was the easy class winner because we like that extra extension. We like that build when you get her in a profile. When you put her in motion, she sure travels free and easy enough but for Amy and I she's just a little more upright in her shoulder she's a little too forward in her knee if we could set her back in both of those areas she would be the class winner young ladies heifer that comes in next in line I think more closely falls a type and kind of our class winner as far as having enough power built in her from behind her with rib shape and dimension again when we put her in motion she just needs to be a little freer and easier to get her above the two heifers above her. Young ladies heifer that comes in next in line. A little larger framed heifer than the, the ones out in front of her. Really long sided, really long hipped, extended enough through her front end. She gets a little plainer in her head, a little plainer in her chest, and then again when we get her in motion, just wish she was a little freer and easier. Honestly, this heifer that comes in next in line, I love the power and stoutness, the balance, the squareness, the muscle. These are all things that I will look for today if I can get them put together in the right package from a structure standpoint and from a condition standpoint. For Amy and I, this heifer's awful heavy in condition for a heifer of this age. This is a lot of heifer for her in April. So I'd like to tone down the condition on her, get her in a little fresher appearance, and maybe she would hold together from a feminine and a maternal standpoint for Amy and I a little better. But I do like the extra bone and power. Young ladies heifer that comes in next in line. Again, a heifer that has some extra power in her when you view her. She's really Really up headed, and, uh, but she's a heifer for Amy, and again gets a little straight in that shoulder, a little upright in that shoulder, and when you put her in motion, just needs to be a little freer and easier. Then we get to some heifers below that just need to be changed structurally to get them any higher. Over here in the Hereford ring, I think we got a really nice class of cattle and two heifers uh, on the top side of this class that fit together extremely well. They're both a lot alike in terms of their type and kind. Uh, the heifer that begins the class for us, uh, she hits you pretty hard when she comes in the ring and where I really enjoy this female is watching her on the move. I think this heifer is probably the best in terms of her structural uh, integrity at the ground. I like the slope and the angle of this female's shoulder, length of body extension, just the overall balance and look, freshness that this one has. Uh, she comes to the top pretty pretty handily. Then we come with the heifer that comes next, and she's a lot like her. Uh, this heifer is real long, real balanced, real feminine. We like her on the move as well. Maybe just not quite as square at the ground as the heifer that begins the class. Here's a heifer that comes in third that I like the way she uh, is balanced and the look that she gives you from the profile, and that's why she stayed up here so high is just because of her overall quality. Where she gets into trouble for me is when we watch her on the move up in her shoulder. She just wants to get a little bit too upright. I like to see her go just a little bit better up of, up of her front end. Then we come with this dark red female here next. Here's a heifer that's got some eye appeal. She demands your attention just because of that dark color. As I study her, the more that I look at this female, I'd like to just see her a touch more correct from her hawk down to the ground. She wants to just hawk in, get a little cow hawked as I watch her go away from us. Then a real nice moderate frame sort of female that's going to come next. Not quite the balance and eye appeal. Then we have a real good looking fresh one. I'd like to see it just a touch more cattle here because this heifer is built extremely well. Just not quite the weight per day of age or performance of the cattle that we see on any, either side of her. 
Then we complete the class with a real stout, broody looking one. This female, when we got her apart from the side, just didn't quite balance up well enough. I'd like to change her hip structure just a touch if I could, make her a little higher, higher in her pins, and I think that'd make that one balance up just a touch better. Well, congratulations. Back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 6H. First place was exhibited by Hayden Mullion with Wallace Design Girl 336. Second place and congratulations goes to Alexis Coling of Bowling Green, Missouri with LK Wilkes Frontier Gal 33533. Third place and congratulations goes to Shelby Griman of Goodall, Iowa. Fourth place in congratulations, Sadie Plagg, Guthrie, Oklahoma. Fifth place was exhibited by Annalise Nicole Mead, Barnett, Missouri. Sixth place went to Haley Grace Walker of Potts Camp, Mississippi. Seventh place in that class was exhibited by Michaela Jo Massey of London, Kentucky. Eighth place went to Ben Selmeyer. And ninth place in that class will go to Grant Allen. Now in the ring, class seven here in your Angus female show. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 11, Horn Spring Heifer Calves. Congratulations. First place goes to back number 3834, TR4064B, Diana 40LET, owned by Kendall Sadler of Tryon, Oklahoma. Second place goes to back number 3854, GGSC Stacy 20 let exhibited by Ella Elizabeth Defford of Jarrettsville, Maryland. Third place, and congratulations, goes to Parker Irwin of Hartshorn, Oklahoma. Fourth place, Wheeler Farm of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Fifth place goes to Sally Graham of DeWitt, Michigan. Sixth place goes to Mary Elliott Martin of Auburn, Alabama. And seventh place, and congratulations, goes to Natalie Pittstick of South Solon, Ohio. Up next, we've got Class 12 Horn Spring Heifer Calves in the ring.
Well, this probably gave uh, me the most challenges of any class that we've seen out here today, just because there's so much quality in here uh, from end to end. And then when you, you can see a lot of things about these cattle, and then you end up uh, having to decide just priorities and placings. And uh, what ends up coming to the top of this class for me is the most complete female. She's a heifer that just balances up extremely nice from the side. Love her look, love her angles, her profile. Really like her from her hawk down to the ground. Uh, just a really nice heifer. Now she gets just a little bit pigeon toed up in her front end. Not too bad, just a little bit. Uh, when we get real nitpicky, that's the thing I would change about that one. But I think a person would be making a mountain out of a molehill if you wanted to really get on her and put her on down in the class for that because this heifer's just got too much quality uh, to go ahead and place her any lower. Heifer that comes into second is probably the one that gives you the most problems because she's the big stout, big bone female. It's got a lot of foot size, a lot of shape, a lot of power. WDA and performance, she's got that dark red color and you like that about her. If we could change this female just a little bit, she could be a little more refined up in through her head and neck. I'm not really a neck guy necessarily uh, because I love all the stoutness and the power and the shape that this one has. She just not wanting to show quite as well today and when he gets her stopped, she wants to just get a little bit weaker behind her shoulders, just doesn't hold herself together quite as well as the heifer that wins the class. Here's a really nice heifer from the profile. This one balances up extremely nice from the side and that's why she's here. I just wish this heifer was a little stouter for me. I'd like to give her just a little bit more shape up in her top and a little bit more down in through her lower stifle when I look at her from the side. But she's got the depth, the rib, the body, the balance. And from the side view profile, she'd compete with anything. I like that heifer a tremendous amount. Heifer that comes in next is another one that paints a really nice picture from the side. I like her depth, the rib, her moderation, her body. She just uh, made really good. She's dead level out of her hip, and I like that about her. She's got a really nice hind leg uh, for me. She just wants to get a little bit shallower in through that rear rib and flank and just doesn't quite reach and go out of her front end as well as the cattle above them. Here's a big, stout, powerful heifer that I like a tremendous amount uh, for a lot of things that she has to offer WDA performance length the body and extension wish this one was a little more coordinated off of her hind leg a lot of times when she gets her stop she just wants to get a little more sickle hawk the point of the hawk kind of sticks out a little bit just throws her off balance just a touch but that's a high quality female Here's a really nice looking one that's coming in next and she's real fresh and feminine. Uh, where she ran into trouble for me is just that tail head. Wants to get a little bit high up in that tail head. Like to drop her down in her mid rib if I could a touch. Here's a real maternal looking one that's gonna come in next. She just doesn't have the balance and eye appeal. Then we got a really good look one, looking one that's gonna come next, but she doesn't have the mid rib of the heifer that's uh, just ahead of her, but you like her balance and look that she gives you from the side. Here's a cowie looking one that's gonna come in next. You like that about her? You like her depth, the rib, her body, just her overall doability. She just doesn't balance up quite as nice from the side as the cattle that we see just above her. This class of Angus females, a lot of give and take for Amy and I here. The heifer we're gonna start off, when she set up on a profile, gives you that very elegant Angus female look. And when you put her in motion, she travels for the free and easiest in the class. When she's standing still, sometimes she's a little turned out on those front feet. And then when you get behind her, she is definitely flatter. There's not as much of her as the two heifers behind her. But from a structure standpoint, the way she travels the ring, she has to be the class winner. The heifer that comes in second, we like the stoutness and power in this female. Good balance on the profile here. Has just a little bit of chest, but that wasn't the deciding factor. As you get her in motion here, she reaches good enough for Amy and I, but every third or fourth step, she wants to be a little more rigid on her pasterns. Amy and I really like the heifer that comes in third here. From behind, this is class winner. She's so balanced and unique in her build. She's so stout boned and good footed. 
However, when we get her in motion, she's rigid on her pasterns in every step. If it wasn't for that, she would end up your class winner. The next heifer that comes in line, love the Angus female, looks so feminine, so good through the center of her body and balance, just gives you a great maternal look. She's a heifer for Amy and I, is more fine bone. She's a little smaller footed. She's a little flatter made when you get behind her. And then we'd like to set her back in the slope of her shoulder just a tick. Um, the heifer that comes in next in line, one of the more powerful built heifers in the class. A heifer get, get, gets a little coarser through her head, a little coarser through her chest, but a sounder kind of heifer with some muscle in her. The next heifer, a little larger framed heifer, big boned and big footed, doesn't have near the capacity in the rear third of that rib cage gets up in that tail head a little bit then we end up with some structure issues to end up the class and back over in the Hereford ring your results from class 12 horn spring heifer calves congratulations first place goes to entry 3866 exr bailey's mckee 3249 et owned by ella weldon of piedmont oklahoma Second place, entry 3868, Purple GG32LET, owned by Suter Clark of Gretna, Virginia. Third place, and congratulations, goes to Caroline Munson of Shallow Water, Texas. Fourth place, Marilyn Pakey of Mino, Oklahoma. Fifth place, goes to Kyle Lemon of Manchester, Maryland. Sixth, congratulations, Nolan Lee of Wellington, Illinois. Seventh place goes to Morgan and McKenna Rogers of Solon, Iowa. And eighth place goes to Holly Perry of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. And ninth place, Cole Smith and Hunter Smith of Pell City, Alabama. At this time, we have your first and seconds in the ring, and we'll select your champion and reserved Horn Spring Heifer Calf. Well, this has been an awfully fun division for uh, Cruz and I to sort through. I really like uh, the way that these cattle come to us here in this division and the way that they all balance up. And I think the structure and just overall look and design, I think we got a ring full of really good cattle. There's some really good uh, seconds over there as well. Uh, for us, it comes together fairly easy. Uh, we found that we thought uh, was uh, pretty dominant in this division and another heifer that uh, we think follows her awfully close. Uh, there's uh, two really good ones out here and, and I, th I think at this time I'll just, uh, instead of go back and talk through uh, every single one of them, we'll go show you the ones that we like for champion and reserve here. And congratulations, your champion Horn Spring Heifer Calf goes to entry 3821, KD Lucky For You, 363LET, owned by Gunnar and Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon. And congratulations, your reserve champion Horn Spring Heifer Calf goes to entry 3866, EXR Bailey's McKee 3249 ET, owned by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Well, congratulations. Back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 7H. First place went to back number 10606. That's Seldom Rest Sandy 3071, exhibited by Kelsey T's. Tice of Leavenworth, Kansas. Second place and congratulations. Go to back number 10605. That's C4 Blackbird 103L exhibited by Tristan Andrew Meyer, Clinton, Tennessee. Third place went to back number 10619 exhibited by Cohen Navinsky of Easton, Kansas. 
Fourth place in that class was exhibited by Weston Michael Hag of Plymouth, Indiana. Fifth place in that class will go to Jared Johnson, Blossom, Texas. Sixth place exhibited by Madison Collison of Rockwell City, Iowa. Seventh place exhibited by Scarlett Carney of Carbondale, Colorado. Eighth place went to Dylan Casaroto of Sumner, Illinois. Ninth place and congratulations, Cora Sullivan, Lawton, Oklahoma. Currently in ring two, we have class 8H here in your Angus female show. Here in your Angus ring, um, it, within this class, we thought this clef, heifer handled this class with ease. Gives you a really striking look from a profile. Love the stoutness and power in this female, the mass. Love her from behind when you view her coming out of her shoulder, how expanded it is she is in her rib, how she carries that thickness right out of the top of her shoulder all the way back at her top and into her hip and down into her stifle. Good bone, good footed, travels as free and easy as any of them probably pushing some extra condition. Uh, probably like to tone down uh, some weight off this heifer a little bit, but you can't deny the stoutness and power in the way she travels around the ring. The heifer that comes in next logically did for Amy and I from a structure standpoint, travels relatively free and easy, balanced well, not quite as neat on a profile as the heifer that's gonna win the class, maybe not just quite as clean down through that throat latch. She's a heifer that's probably not quite as massive through the center of the rib, but there's still plenty of this heifer. She's just in class with one 
one that has a lot to her. Young ladies, heifer comes in next in line. When she gets her pulled together here in the profile, gives you that great look. Very balanced, good bone and good foot under this female. When you get her in motion, gets restricted off both ends, and I'd like to free her up. Uh, the young man's heifer that comes in next in line uh, gives you really eye appealing look from a profile here. Not near the mass and substance of the heifers in front of her. And again, when you get her in motion, you just want to change how she travels off her front end here a little bit. Um, then we get down to some heifers that just need to be freer or easier, a little deeper or stouter in the rib design to get them any higher today. Well, congratulations in Angus Ring results out of class 8H. First place in congratulations. We'll go to back number 10623, exhibited by Brenna Leanne Bartlow, Monticello, Illinois, with Henning BC2 Sandy 3012. Second place in congratulations went to Hayden Mullion, back number 10638, with UDE Phyllis 3024. Third place in that class will go to Jillian Bryant, Columbia, Missouri. Fourth place exhibited by Caden Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana. Fifth place exhibited by Jesslyn Hudson. Sixth place in that class will go to Helen Orr. Seventh place and congratulations, McKamey Jean. Eighth place exhibited by Charlotte Gray Wood. Now in the ring, class 9H. This is a more challenging class here. I don't know that there's one that just jumps out and says, hey, I'm your class winner. But when you uh, study everything and consider everything and say, which one would I want to take home, it, it ends up being this heifer that wins this class. I think she's got a lot of future. I like her structure, the way that she goes from her hawk down to the ground, the balance, the profile, the look that she gives you. Uh, she's the one that I would take home in this class. I, I like that effort a tremendous amount. She does give up some weight per day of age and performance, particularly to some of the cattle that are down in the class a bit, but I just like the look and the extra structure that you get in that one. Here's a real cowy looking one here that's real maternal. She's very sound at the ground. That's why she gets on up there for us. I think I think that she just meets our needs uh, and, and matches the class winner just a touch better than any of the other cattle in the class. Just a really complete, so solid, honest, good one there in second. Here we have a heifer in third that's got a lot of balance and look, and I like the outward turn and shape that this one has to her rib cage. Uh, for me, 
again, she wants to get just a little bit higher up in her tail head. I'd like to see her handle her hawk uh, just a touch better if I could. The problem female in the class is the one that's going to come here and forth. Lots of performance, lots of body, bone, and shape, and power. And actually, when we put her on the move, she wants to hit the ground just a little bit harder. But I like her a touch better on the move up in her top line than I do that when she's standing. When she was over here from the profile, she just wanted to come apart a little bit more. Here's a real long, extended, good-looking one that's going to come in next. I'd like to see her have just a touch more shape in her upper hip as she comes back in through her pins, just like to change that a touch if I could. She too wants to get just a touch sickle hawk, but you love the balance, the presence, and the look that that long body high performing heifer gives you. Here's a really nice looking one from the side as well, and I tell you, when this class came in, we, uh, Cruz and I were both sitting there going, okay, which one are we going to pull last? You know, these three heifers are all really good, high quality cattle. And I, and I commend you guys for bringing this kind of quality right here is completing a class right now. And, and a heifers like this could have won shows all day long 10 years ago. So these are really high quality cattle. I enjoy them a lot. They just don't have quite the look and balance and overall substance of the cattle that we see above them. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 13, pulled junior heifer calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3624, TBC Dorothy 300, owned by Catherine Coleman of Modesto, California. Second place, back number 3640, KJF 31, Miss Field 028 LET, owned by GKB Cattle of Desdemona, Texas. Third place, and congratulations, Hawk Livestock of Earlville, Illinois. Fourth goes to Nash and Tug Louderman of Macomb, Illinois, and Brumley Farms of Oravada, Nevada. Fifth place goes to TR Cattle Company of Glencoe, Oklahoma. Sixth, Ava and Brimley Doig of St. Paul, Indiana. Seventh place, congratulations, goes to Hannah Pembroke of Beggs, Oklahoma. And eighth place, Jordan Mitchum of Vail, North Carolina. Up next, we've got class 14, Pole Junior Heifer Calves.
here in the Angus show. Uh, we're going to start off with a female as a combination female for Amy and I. We really like this one when she gets parked, and that's not talk to take away from the way she gets around, but she gives you just a really good Angus female look on a profile here. Love the way her top's built and out the hip with really a lot of shape and dimension in, in her rib cage. Enough muscle in this one. More power than the heifer behind her. Travels free and easy is enough. Uh, the heifer that's going to come in next, very elegant from a profile. She's a heifer that's sound enough as she goes about the ring. She gets flatter in her makeup just doesn't have near the power in the rear third of that body the way it's designed. I just like to give her a little more oomph, but a sound, uh, real feminine, maternal kind of female. Uh, the young lady's heifer that comes in next in line, we really like this one parked, really long side at long tip, enough muscle in this female. She's the heifer when we get her in motion, just doesn't reach off both ends like the he two heifers in front of her, but a really complete female for this young lady. We come to a heifer Amy and I really like from a bone standpoint, a foot standpoint. We like the way she's built through her head and neck. We like the rib shape and the muscle of this one. We felt she just gets two round hips. She's dropped a little bit at those pins. If, if we could pick her up at her pins and just change that hip like those heifers in front, she probably moves to the top of the class for Amy and I. Uh, the heifer that comes in behind her here, again, a very balanced female, as you see on her profile here, but she's a little more bunched up. She's a shorter-sided, shorter hip kind of female. Female. We'd like to lengthen her out like the heifers in front of her to get her up any higher day. Female that comes next in line, good rib shape and dimension, a really nice complete female from a, a capacity standpoint and muscle. When we get her in motion, wish she was a little more flexible off her hock. Then we get into some heifers that just need changed in their capacity of their structure. Well, congratulations. Back in the Angus ring. Results out of class 9H. First place will go to back number 10646. That's Moffitt Proven Queen 3004 exhibited by Lee Engel of Colfax, Iowa. Second place and congratulations. Back number 10649. That's Seldon Rest Sandy 3035 exhibited by Allie Perry, Fayetteville, Tennessee. Third place was exhibited by Alexis Coling, Bowling Green, Missouri. Fourth place will go to Nani Mason. Fifth place in that class, and congratulations, Casey Lee Meyer. Sixth place was exhibited by Sienna Hutchins. Seventh place will go to Gillespie Angus Ranch. Eighth place also to Gillespie Angus Ranch. And ninth place will go to Redlands Community College. Now in the ring, class 10H. Well, this class is a lot like uh, the last one. It's just challenging, and there's some differences in the types and kinds of these heifers. Uh, the one that I'm going to begin the class with today, I think there's some give and take between these two heifers, and you could sit here and debate all day uh, which one's this and which one's that. I went with the heifer that I'd like to take home the most. I think I see the most good in this one, her integrity. Her lines, I like her behind her shoulders just a touch better than I do uh, the heifer that's here in second. Now, she's wanting to uh, be pretty flighty here today, and that may be that plays to her advantage because she's so fresh and goes so good. But I think the biggest difference for me is out their hip. I'd just like to uh, change this one's hip structure just a touch if I could. She just wants to get a little rounder, especially on the move. Now, when she gets her stops and gets her loin down, uh, she does level that top line out a tremendous amount. And, and it makes her look a lot better. But when she goes, she wants to kind of tuck her pins. And then as she stops here, she just kind of falls apart a little bit in comparison to the heifer. Love the shape, love the color, love the look. Uh, Cruz likes this heifer a tremendous amount, and I can see why, because uh, this heifer does have a lot of look and a lot of uh, shape and, and just dimension when you get behind her. I like that heifer a lot. Here's a real broody looking one here that comes in next, and one that maybe gives me a little bit of uh, trouble. Uh, when, I, when I go to evaluate her, the more I studied this heifer, I, I 
I think that this heifer has a lot of condition on her, and I'm not quite sure she has enough shape to her just by nature. Now, I think a lot of that shape that she gets is maybe from the extra condition, but you like the smoothness, and you like the cow look that that one gives you. Here's a little bit uh, longer, sort of better looking one that gives you a nicer look from the side when he gets her parked. You like the angles of that one's shoulder and the way that she looks. I like to stouten her up at the ground just a touch if I could, but I think a really nice eye appealing female that we have here next. Again, I think this class is just full of good cattle because we got another one here that comes next real correct in her top line. Gives you a really nice balanced look from the side. I like to just power that one up and give her a touch more shape up in her up her hip. She just doesn't give me quite the uh, dimensional look that I'd like to see from the side as we compare to the cattle that just left the ring. Here's another one that's got some depth of rib and body and some cowiness to her. Uh, she's just a female that maybe doesn't handle her hind leg quite as well. Didn't balance up quite as nice from the side. Real pretty fresh one here that I admire the condition uh, that she's brought in. Uh, this is a heifer that I could see on down the road having a lot of future just because she's built so well. There's just not quite as much cattle there today. Then we come down here to complete the class with a couple of females again. Like we talked about to start with. With lots of quality for me and these cattle just don't balance up quite as nicely from the side as the cattle that are ahead of them and back over in the Hereford ring your results from class 14 pole junior heifer calves congratulations first place goes to entry 3649 Hawk Markle 9 let owned by Hawk livestock of Earlville Illinois Second place and congratulations goes to back number 3656, Wildcat L. May Mardi Gras 34 ET, owned by Nicholas, Lauren, and Brady Jones of Darlington, Wisconsin. Third place goes to Whitney, Cora, and Stormy Swaim of Rockville, Indiana. Fourth place goes to Wyatt and Quaid McIntyre of Leedy, Oklahoma. Fifth, GKB Cattle of Desdemona, Texas. Sixth place and congratulations goes to Luke Hamlin of Weatherford, Texas. Seventh, GKB Cattle of Desdemona, Texas. Eighth place goes to Curry Herfords of McAllister, Oklahoma. And ninth place and congratulations goes to Kagan Beckett of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Up next, be looking for class 15 pole junior heifer calves.
here in the Angus ring. Uh, gonna start off with a really uh, structurally correct sound, nice moving female. Young lady gets her pulled together here, gives you a really good look on the profile. She's got the right amount of bone and foot under her. It, it, it very is pleasing on a profile, the way it, the ratio of it compared to the rest of the way she's built. She's really laid in good at the point of her shoulder. She's really laid in in that blade all the way to the top of her spine, down her top. Is she the most powerful one from behind? No. If Amy and I can make her just a little bit wider based as she goes away from you and give her just a little bit more we would like to do that but that's still just a unique female from in this class from her structure standpoint like the little bit of extra power and the heifer that's going to come in second here especially down her top out her hip and down into her stifle she's a heifer that has plenty of shape and dimension to her rib gives you a good look from a profile here she's sure feminine and maternal enough through her front end and when she walks, she sure sound as she goes about the ring. She gets rounder in her hip structure for Amy and I. If we could make that hip a little more ideal for us, like the heifer right out front, she might be your class winner. Like the power of this female, very maternal looking on the profile. Probably not quite as attractive as the two right in front of her, but a, but a nice soft top, good hip, big bodied kind of female that travels free and easy enough. She gets a little um, coarser made in her head and her chest she goes back into a big body and cuts up a little harder into her flank than we'd like to see but that's a structurally sound very maternal female young man's heifer here again enough rib shape and muscle in this female for Amy and I thought she's pushing a little extra condition and with that said she gets maybe a little rounder in her make as she goes she gets up in her top a little bit down in her pins a little bit gentleman's heifer that comes along next in line very angus female looking but a little refined for amy and i'd like to see a little more bone and foot under this female and then we get down into some heifers that got futures to them as they grow up but they need to be either a little more structurally sound or a little more of them All right, back over here in the Hereford ring, uh, this is a, t a challenging class, and uh, when you come down to it and try to find the most complete one with the least amount of faults, this heifer here rises to the top for us. Uh, here's one that is extremely good looking from the side yet. She's got a really nice shape uh, up over her top and back in through her hip. And I think the differences between the top two here, I think both the heifers are really good at the ground and move nice. Uh, the difference for me is this one's just laid in a little nicer in her tail head, sets a little smoother there. I like the way that this heifer goes and reaches on her hind leg, tremendous amount. I like the structure and the look of this heifer, tremendous amount in second, and there's just give and take in all of them. For me, this one, when she got stopped a lot of times, just wanted to run a little bit high up in her tail head and didn't just quite give me that balance and look, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, she was giving me that look is because when she goes, she just wants to lift that tail head up i'd like to jam that down into her spine just a little bit if i could the one i really wanted to like and i wanted to start with is this heifer here in third and uh, as she stopped i think that she presents you a really nice picture from the side she's dead level in her top dead level in her hip and i like that about her she's got plenty of mid rib plenty of look uh, up and through her front end. I like this heifer a lot. Her problem for me was when we set her in motion on that last drive and she just wants to get up in those ankles quite a bit. I wonder if I'd like to just change her foot size a little bit. Her toes are just a touch pointy and uh, she just wants to roll up on that uh, hawk just a little bit or those hind pasterns. That's the difference there. But I think a really high quality female, if you could fix that, we could, uh, we could move her up a touch. This is a big, stout, high-performing beast that we got here coming in the next hole. Talk about rib and bone and muscle and shape. Uh, she's one that, uh, for me, when we put her in motion, she just wants to hit the ground pretty hard on her hind, too. I'd like to just see her pick that hind leg up and flex a touch better if we could. But love the weight per day of age and performance of that one. Real long-bodied one that's going to come next. It's real fresh in terms of her appearance. like to see that one have a touch more mid-rib, give her a touch more of a maternal look if I could. Here's a really nice moderate framed heifer that's going to come in next. Again, just didn't quite set up as nice from the side, maybe not quite the femininity and balance. 
Cal Prospect right here. I think this one's going to have a tremendous amount of doability and stay in a really moderate, nice uh, frame size for him. You can see the doability in that female. She just doesn't have the look as the females on either side of her. Then we complete the class. It's a lo real long-bodied heifer. It's got some length and extension. Again, not quite the stoutness and power that we find in the cattle above her. Well, congratulations back over in the Angus Ring. Results out of your last class here in Division Two of our Junior Heifer Calves. First place and congratulations, Allison Davis of Shelbyville, Tennessee. That was back number 10665 with SSFDS Lady 3023. Second place in that class will go to back number 10656. That's PCC SULL Sarah Dream. 417 exhibited by Cotley Wingy of Cisco, Texas. Third place in that class will go to Barton Cattle of Frederick, Oklahoma. Fourth place went to Brady York of Palestine, Illinois. Fifth place was exhibited by Cade Hendricks. Sixth place, Bracey Leanne Cagle. Seventh place in that class went to Lane Christopher Pellerin. Eighth place exhibited by Westland Elliott. And ninth place to Gillespie Angus Ranch. Now in ring two, we have your first and seconds out of division two of our junior heifer calves. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 15, pole junior heifer calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3657, Dietzman Whole Lotta Rosie 6ET, owned by Landon and Colin Dietzman of Leesburg, Indiana. Second place, and congratulations, goes to entry 3665, GS Madison L04ET, owned by Marley Granis of Flemingsburg, Kentucky. Third place goes to Quentin and Andrew Ray of Brooksville, Kentucky. Fourth place, Landon and Aubrey Rakestraw of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Fifth place, and congratulations, goes to Fallon and Gunnar Gore of Madras, Oregon. Sixth place, Holden Reeder of Seguin, Texas. Seventh, Congratulations goes to Hannah and Ryan Olson of Arkdale, Wisconsin. And eighth place goes to Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. At this time, we've got class 16 pole junior heifer calves in the ring.
two cattle well, up on the top end of this class that are very, very good in my mind. And I think there's some take uh, in the two cattle. There's no question about it. Uh, when you get to studying them and analyzing them and looking at all the good that this heifer has that wins this class, I just can't uh, get away from starting with her just because she's so dead level out of her hip. She's long and level out of her hip. She's laid in just a little neater in her shoulder. I like her up through her head and neck just to touch more. And she's got plenty of power. I realize the heifer behind her does have a little bit more bone and a little bit more muscle shape. Uh, and I usually side for power, but in this particular instance, I like the cowiness, the freshness, the design, just the overall look and the striking uh, presence that this one gives me from the side enough to go ahead and start with this one. And like I said, it's not taking anything away from this stout, powerful kind of cattle that we have here in second. Big bone, big footed. She's got a big old hip in her as well. She just doesn't lay in quite as nice in that shoulder. Wanted to come apart just a hair more. I don't don't read her as being quite as feminine up and through her neck and head and when you got one that's at high quality to begin the class uh, a good heifer ends up in second but that's an awful nice one there then we come with a heifer here next that I think has a lot of length of body and look and this heifer could compete uh, uh, to win this class in a lot of ways uh, every time when I looked at this heifer up in her front end she just wants to toe out a little bit too much for me and I realize that's getting nitpicky but there's a couple of really good cattle ahead of you and so that's why he ended up in third here's another heifer that comes in next that certainly uh, comes to us green in terms of her condition uh, you like that about her she too wanted to toe out up in her front end just to touch just like the heifer that was there in third then we come with a heifer here next and I could see running her higher in the class if she didn't have uh, as much chest as she does she's wanting to push out quite a bit of brisket and chest but man you love the fresh hair coat the presentation the look the overall shape that this heifer has she's extremely good in her own regard then we have a real long bodied uh, female here coming next it's certainly powerful up high where she runs into trouble is down low for as much power as she has up high. I wish she had a touch more bone. like to refine her up through her neck and jaw just a hair if I could. Here's a real complete one that's coming next. Not a lot of major holes in this heifer. I think she's got a lot of future, uh, but today I just need a little bit more cattle to compete any higher in the class. Then we come down and a couple of heifers that are maybe a little bit contrasting in terms of their type and kind. This one I sided with a touch more balance and look, and then we got a heifer that's real powerful that's going to complete the class. She just doesn't give us quite the balance and look like to change her behind her shoulder if I could. Here in the Angus Ring, let's give these exhibitors and most of all that young lady a nice round of applause for this division. It's always scary when something like that happens, um, but I'm glad she's going to be okay. Uh, as we go along here within this division, uh, you know, honestly, Amy and I, as we went through it, we were surprised by a little bit that we didn't find cattle that looked as much alike as we thought we could going through this, and, and that's just on a given year. I think there's a lot of quality in these heifers that won these classes, but I think there's a scream amount of difference. I'll be the first one to admit that. But within each class, we had to try to find something that, that suited us and put them together like we wanted them to go together. This heifer that won the first class has a lot of things Amy and I like. We like the bone and footwork under this, the shape to her rib. She's still very clean and, and, and very attractive through her front end and her head and neck. She's good down her top with plenty of muscle in her. She travels real free and easy. She's a little shorter. Side it compared to some of the other heifers out here and she's probably just a little looser built in her upper shoulder she gets maybe just a tick open there which allows her to appear just a little bit restricted in that upper heart behind her shoulder but that's still a heifer Amy and I are considering when you get, go from a muscle standpoint a rib standpoint with some bone and foot and the way she travels the heifer that won the second in class Amy and I from a structure standpoint we really like this female she's 
really deep and in the center of that rib cage and she carries that depth into both flanks she's very balanced she's really laid in well that blade of her shoulder and the and the point of her shoulder she's good at her knee she's a heifer that's not overly extended up front but there's a there's a really nice maternal head and neck on this female with plenty of muscle she's not built with or she's not blessed with the hair of some of the other heifers but she makes just such a nice neat package of a complete Angus female. Again, probably not as long-sided as a couple of the other heifers out here, but darn sure long-sided enough, and the, the build of this female and the future of her, definitely in consideration. Gentleman's heifer that won the next class, probably one of the longest-sided heifers out here. Long-fronted, good enough bodied female, good bone and foot, travels free and easy. When you get behind her, is she as powerful build as some of the other heifers out here? Probably not. Maybe as you view her here, she gets a little easy in her top, out of her shoulder and her spine before she gets into her loin there as you view her from here. But really a nice, complete female that can travel. Um, the heifer that won the next class is probably the most unique female out here from a standpoint of she has that overwhelming muscle mass and rib shape and dimension. This is a big footed, big boned female that's really good down her top and square. And with all that power built on her frame, she's still so feminine out through her front end. She's got a really nice head on her. She's clean in her chest. She travels free and easy for a heifer with that kind of mass and power. She moves right along soft and easy. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't think she's over conditioned, but she's right there. That's a 12 o'clock one that if my sons were fitting her, I would advise them to go home and ease up on her for here for a while. But that doesn't change the fact of the high quality female we have here and puts together a lot of things really nicely. The heifer that won the next class, Amy thought, and I thought in that class that this was really a very complete female. She's very balanced on a profile. She has enough rib shape and dimension and depth. She's a heifer that's extended enough up front long enough in her hip, she has enough of power when she get, you get behind her. She's probably not overwhelming in any standpoint, but she puts everything together in a very neat package. You know, as you view her on a profile here, she's a, she's a little shorter neck and a little easier top than some of the other heifers out here, but there's a lot of high quality in this female. The heifer that won the last class for Amy and I just did so from a stoutness or from a soundness standpoint we thought she traveled easily they're free and the easiest in the class she's long-sighted she's attractive up front good bone and good foot when you get behind her she's a little narrower made from her hooks and pins down into her stifle and you see that when she moves because she's narrower based as she goes about the ring but she's still very sound and a very complete female uh, Amy and I, we kind of narrowed this down to three heifers. Uh, there was a heifer for Amy and I, the way we like them, that won the division handily for us. And then it was kind of a contest for another couple. To, and Amy will go out here and get the, those pairs for us, or that pair of heifers. Over here on the Hereford side, I think we have a great division here, and I am so proud of these four cattle that we have out here in this lineup. I've always thought it'd be a lot of fun to uh, have a little sort pin over there as these cattle go out. Could you imagine being able to sort off about 30 of these really good heifers to take home with you? Because I tell you, I would literally take any one of these heifers home in, that are in the ring, and I think the sky's the limit for them. I think you could do a lot things when these heifers just depending on how you wanted to breed them but they got the tools these heifers are awfully good and as good as they are you know as good as these uh, eight females are that are out here in the ring we do find one that we think uh, puts a lot of the good things together into one total package she's the one that's the hardest for me to poke a lot of holes in and Cruz is going to show you which one we like to win this division
Well, back over the Angus ring results out of Division Two Heifer Cavs. Congratulations, champion, going to Brianna Leanne Bartlow of Monticello, Illinois, coming out of Class 8. That was back number 10, 623 with Henning BC2, Sandy, 3012. Reserve in Division Two goes to back number 10, 606, coming out of Class 7. Seldom rest, Sandy, 3071. Exhibited by Kelsey Ray Tice, Leavenworth, Kansas. We're now going to welcome in class 11H here into the Angus ring. And back over in the Hereford ring, congratulations. We've got your results. Your champion pole, Junior Heifer Calf, goes to entry 3669, BKC MCC, Living Distinctive, 370 LET. Owned by Grady and Hudson Carter of Stratford, Oklahoma. And out of that same class, your reserve champion pole junior heifer calf goes to entry 3671, BKC MCC Love Distinctive 372 LET. Owned by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Once again, congratulations to all those exhibitors. And we also have your results from class 16 pole junior heifer calves. Again, first place went to back number 3669, exhibited by Hudson and Grady Carter of Stratford, Oklahoma. Second place went to back number 3671, Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Third place, Madeline Grace Thompson and Brinley Ann Thompson of Amity, Missouri. Fourth place, Aiden Barber of Channing, Texas. Fifth place, and congratulations, William Faust of Wax Waxcomb, Texas. Sixth place, Hunter Smith of Pell City, Alabama. Seventh goes to Jordan Mitchum of Vail, North Carolina. Eighth place, Barbara Ranch of Channing, Texas. And ninth place, Hunter Smith and Cole Smith of Pell City, Alabama. And at this time, we've got class 17 Horn Junior Heifer Cavs entering the ring.
And back over in the Hereford ring, for those of you that are just now joining us, whether in person or on the live stream, we'd like to introduce you to our judges today. Mr. Kyle Collier and Cruz Collier of Bruno, Idaho of Collier, Hereford, and Angus Cattle. We'd also like to make a quick announcement that in between our polled and horned female champion drive, we will name your 2024 Hereford Herdsman of the Year. So once again, you certainly want to be here for that, and we will name your Hereford Herdsman of the Year in between the polled and horned female champion drive.
Tell you what, these are three really, really good heifers on the top end of this class, and I can see a guy jumbling them around a number of ways because, honestly, they're a lot alike in terms of their type and kind, yet they've got little differences here and there, but, man, these three heifers are all really, really good. Tremendous quality here. The one that's going to begin the class just paints the best picture from the side. She's got depth of rib. She's got body. She's dead level out of her hip. She's real correct in her top line. I like her from her hawk to the ground. Asked all three of these cattle to go this last time, and I can't tell much difference, honestly, in movement. I think they all move extremely well, so that didn't sort it. Uh, what sorted it for me is just when you get off to the side of this heifer and study her shape and dimension and just the overall look that she gives me, I think a really high-quality female. That's not taking anything away from this one in second because she's got a tremendous amount of shape and balance and quality, quality in her as well. Well, uh, this is just an awfully good heifer. She reaches really good off her hind leg. She's probably not quite as correct from her hawk down to the ground as the heifer that's just ahead of her off of her hind leg when you watch her travel from the side. I don't read it to be a problem. It's just not as eye appealing when you look at her from the side. But I think those are two really good heifers. Probably the greenest one and maybe the one that's got the most future is this one that's going to have to stand in third today. And I, I really like this heifer a tremendous amount. I think this one's got a big, bright future. She just ran into two cattle that were maybe a touch more ready today, but I think that heifer's awfully good in her own right. Then we start getting down into some cattle where there's a lot of give and take. We've got a real long body, high-performing female here that's going to come in next. Good presentation, real fresh in terms of her look. She just doesn't have the profile, the depth of rib and body that we see in the cattle just above her. This next effort coming in it certainly has a lot of length and look. She's really level in her top line. I just like to power her up underneath just a touch if I could. Then we come in with a heifer again that's really nice on the standstill. We like the three-dimensional look that she gives us up high. She just needs more depth of rib and body. She just wants to look a little tubular from me from the side. Real good, long, uh, profiling female that's going to come next. She just needs more opened up underneath for me. She wants to come a little close at her chest, and as I watch her go away from me, I like to see her maintain just a touch more base width if I could. Here's a real nice female here that's coming in next and again I think these classes and you got you folks up in the stands can see it's not easy to pull a heifer and last anymore because they all have so much quality there's quality all the way down in the in at the end of this class you can see the cattle have quality they just don't quite have the balance and look and shape maybe as the cattle that we see ahead of them Nice set of heifers here in the Angus ring, but I think two heifers had sorted themselves to the top with, with ease for Amy and I. Uh, the heifer we're going to start with, longest side at longest hip heifer, just goes together with such a nice look from a profile here. Plenty of product from a, uh, a rib standpoint or a muscle standpoint when you get behind her. Plenty of bone and foot in this female. Very attractive through her front end. Um, when we put her in motion, she probably just gets around adequate enough for Amy and I. We'd like to see her be a little easier in, in all four of her joints and her knees and her hocks to maybe reach just a little better. But that's a very complete female that travels free and easy enough and the class winner for us. Gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line. Again, very Angus female looking. A lot of rib shape and dimension in this female. She's a shorter sided, shorter hip version of the heifer right in front of her. And again, when we put her in motion, just like to be a little more flexible and relaxed off both ends. Young ladies heifer that comes in next in line, like the length and feminine look of this female. She travels free and easy enough, just gets overwhelmed from a muscle and a rib st standpoint from the two heifers in front of her. Gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line, a little bit extra length like that class winner has. Really a good presence in this female when this young man gets her set up on a profile. She's a heifer that just needs set back in the slope of that shoulder. I'd like to change her to her knee as it goes to the ground to get her any higher. Young lady's heifer that comes in next in line really gives you a wild look from a profile here. She's just really up headed and really cool neck. She's big boned and big footed. For Amy and I, she just gets coarser built in the point of that shoulder, tighter in her heart. We just need to change that to get her any 
higher today. Next heifer line, a larger framed heifer with some rib in her, but she's a heifer that gets a little roll in, this top, in her top, pinched in her loin. We get down to two heifers. I'd just like to change them a little bit at phenotypically to get them any higher today. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from Class 17 Horn Junior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3878, CMC Lucky Roll 356 LET, owned by Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama, and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Second place, entry 3884, Purple HB Dearney's 21 LET, owned by Crew and Kara Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. Third place, and congratulations, Hawk Livestock of Earlville, Illinois. Fourth place goes to Taos and Brazos Heck of Fitzhugh, Oklahoma. Fifth place, TR Cattle Company of Glencoe, Oklahoma. Sixth place, Quade McIntyre and Wyatt McIntyre of Leedy, Oklahoma. Seventh, Champion Davis of Wheeler, Texas. Eighth place goes to Conley Davis and Addison Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Ninth place goes to McKenna and Morgan Rogers of Solon, Iowa. Tenth place goes to Mason Reeder of Seguin, Texas. And 11th, Tegan Hames of Tuttle, Oklahoma. At this time, we have class 18 Horn Junior Heifer Calves in the ring. At the conclusion of this class, we will bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserve Horn Junior Heifer Calf. Well, back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 11 and a good way to start off division three of your junior heifer calves. First place, a good back number 10683, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa, with Sol Ellie. 3243L. Second place in that class will go to John Allison of Yukon, Oklahoma, back number 10692 with EXAR Girl, EXAR Frontier Gal 3681. Third place in that class was exhibited by Jesslyn Hudson. Fourth place will go to Eli Ackeson of Sh Stockton, Kansas. Fifth place and congratulations will go to Allo Coulter. Sixth place in that class was exhibited by Westland Elliott. Seventh place will go to Ruth Watt. Eighth place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Kagan McCat. Now in ring two, we have class 12H here in division three of your junior of your Angus show.
Really close placing here on the top end of this class. And at the end of the day, and we watch these heifers walk, I don't think there's just a huge difference in movement to want to make a whole lot out of it. I think both these heifers are really sound in that regard. Uh, when it comes right down to it, I think this heifer that wins the class, just enough more freshness, a touch more presence and look uh, up and through her front end. But at the same point in time, I think this heifer has plenty of muscle. She's actually shaped uh, uh, similar to the heifer just behind her. I just read her as being a touch harder in terms of her condition, but yet she still has all the rib and, and body that she needs by nature. I think a really nice heifer. This is a broody, really good cattle here that comes in second, and I think a really nice cow. You can see she's really easy fleshing, easy doing. She's very sound on the move. She's just a good kind of cattle that I think we need a lot more of. Today, she maybe just pushes a little bit more chest, a little bit more front end, and doesn't have quite the look and balance of the heifer that wins the class. Here's a really nice looking one, too, that can set up from the side and give you an awful nice look. Uh, she's really long and level out of her hip. Wants to get a little bit higher in her tail head at times. I'd like to stouten her up in her lower stifle and core just a hair as I compare to the cattle above them. This one here is really shapey up high and she's a big stout, high performing kind of heifer. When I study her at a three quarter front view, you know, this female just wants to close up, up in her chest a little bit too much. I'd like to give that one. Touch more with the skeleton if I can underneath. Here's a nice looking one too and I think this was probably one of the hardest classes again that we've had Then when we would go to put, pull the bottom placing cattle it's really difficult because these three cattle all have quality it's just the little things that start separating uh, things here because these are really high quality cattle that complete this class. All right, back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from Class 18, Horn Junior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3890, GKB McKay Estelle, 3204ET, owned by Gage, Graham, and Grady Kramer of Waxahachie, Texas. Second place goes to back number 3887, SLC Y79D Reba, 5LET, owned by Corey Stump of Columbia, Illinois. Third place goes to Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Fourth place and congratulations goes to Grant Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Fifth place, Olivia Eubank and Hadley Eubank of Oblong, Illinois. Sixth, Gracie Gist of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. And seventh place, Randall Peterson of Paris, Illinois. At this time, we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserved Horn Junior Heifer Calf. Another really, really nice division, and like the last one, I'm proud of all four of these cattle. I think a person could take them home and do a whole lot with them. They're, they offer the right breeding tools that we need. They come to us in the right packages, the right shape, the right structure, and the right soundness. Uh, for us, we landed on a heifer that we like pretty well. We'll take another look and uh, consider them for reserve after we pick our champion here. Cruz will show you which one we like to win this division. Congratulations to you guys. And congratulations, your champion Horn Junior Heifer Calf comes out of Class 17, goes to entry 3878, CMCC Lucky Roll, 356 LET, owned by Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama, and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And congratulations, your reserve champion, Horn Junior Heifer Calf, also comes out of Class 17. 
Goes to back number 3884, Purple HB Dearney's 21 LET, owned by Crew and Kara Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. Once again, congratulations to all of our Hereford exhibitors. And up next, we'll have class 19 polled senior heifer calves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you following along in the Angus ring, we have a correction on Division II Reserve Champion. Division II Reserve Champion went to back number 10598. That was Wallace Design Girl 336, exhibited by Hayden Mullion. Here in your Angus ring, uh, we're going to start off. Di Honestly, for Amy and I, we feel like this is the deepest class we've seen today. Um, there's heifers pretty good in this class that go four or five deep. There are sh sure some differences. We're going to start with a pair of females that I think when you get them on profile, they're a lot alike. Uh, we're going to start with the heifer to Amy and I, just a little stouter boned, a little bigger footed, and, and maybe structured just a tick better at the point of her shoulder and her knee. Not picking on the one behind her, but the differences between the two. I like the balance of this female, the good look she gives you. She travels free and easy, puts together a lot of things really nice, really like the female. Female comes in next in line is a big body, long-sided female, a heifer that's probably a little surprising when you get out behind her because there's a lot of muscle in this female. She's good down her top. She's probably not quite as long-hipped. She's probably not quite as big-boned and big-footed as the female right in front of her. And then, as I said, maybe just picking on one I really like, just like to change her compared to the one in front of her, just a tick at her knee and how it hits the ground. Gentlemen's heifer that comes in next in line would have won a lot of classes today. Again, a very complete built female with some rib shape and dimension to her. She's a little more modern and boxy probably than the two females right in front of her, not quite as long sided as, as either one of those, but a lot of completeness to this female. When you get out behind her, maybe a little flatter built than both females females right in front of her. Probably a little stouter boned and stouter footed heifer comes in here next. She's, like I said, probably a little bigger boned and bigger footed than the two right in front of her. Maybe not the one, the one that class. Again, a long-sided, square hip kind of female that travels free and easy. For Amy and I, as we read her here from a profile, doesn't have quite the rib shape and dimension in the rear third of that rib cage as the ones that go in front of her. But really, a, a high-quality female, again, would have won a lot of classes today if she'd been in. Uh, this effort that comes next in line, 
Um, when she first hit the ring, this one's kind of for me and Amy. We like the rib shape and balance in this one, the bone, the good look she gives you. She travels free and easy enough with a lot of product. Our issue is when we get her stopped here, she really gets open at the point of that shoulder, gets really tied in hard in her foreflank coming out of that shoulder. We just need to change that lower shoulder structure down to her knee and in her forerib to get her up any higher today. Young lady's heifer that comes in next in line, larger framed heifer that's very long-sided and give, sure gives you a good look. She's sure sound enough as she goes about the ring here. Just like to make more mass to this female through the center of that rib cage and back into that rear third. And then you get down to a couple females that are still high quality females. They just fell into a class with a lot of really good females. These are that female going out the gate. I'd probably like to change her and her heart a little bit and the structure of her knee. The last heifer sure just needs some more power to catch up with the heifers in front of her. Well, congratulations back over here in the Angus ring results out of class 12H. First place and congratulations goes back number 10, 696. That's BNWZ Sarah's Dream 3184 exhibited by Mercedes Faree Sullivan, Indiana. Second place in that class go to back number 10709, CCC Frontier Gal 0669 exhibited by Delaney Jones, Herod, Ohio. Third place. We'll go to back number 10710, 10, exhibited by Suter Clark, Gretna, Virginia. Fourth place in that class was exhibited by McKinley Pollum with KCC Miss Annie Lou 215L. Fifth place in that class will go to Zoe Lynn Cottrell of Lawton, Oklahoma. Sixth place was exhibited by Sadie Blagg of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Seventh place will go to Stevie Hogue. Eighth place and congratulations will go to Brady Bustle. Now in the ring will be class 13. We got a really high quality class out here and I think a really high quality female to win this one. I mean, this one uh, paints about as nice a picture from the side as you can imagine. She's just so good in her top line. She's dead level out of her hip. She travels really nice. She's correct from her hawk to the ground. And where she excels really the cattle is just how she blends from end to end, how smooth she is in that shoulder. Her neck comes up out of the top side of her shoulder. What I really appreciate about this one is how green she is, too. Zephyr's not carrying hardly any fat, and she just has all that rib and middle and outward turn to her rib cage without any extra uh, flesh and condition. It's pretty admirable uh, the way that that heifer puts everything together like that. I agree with a lot of you probably that think this heifer is a lot stouter that comes there in second, and, and at first appearance, she certainly is. She gives you a really nice three-dimensional look for sure. She's got a lot of shape and power down through her rib and loin, a lot of lower rib depth. She just carries a, a lot more condition than the heifer does that wins the class, but do I think it's too much? No. I think this heifer is real broody. I think she's real cowy in her own right. I think that's a really good, high-quality female that comes in second. Then we have a, a heifer that kind of stayed in the mix uh, for as long as we could. Maybe just not quite the style and look, but I, I tell you what, you really study this one. I think this heifer's got some real tools. She's real deep in terms of her body. She's dead level in her top line. I love her behind her shoulders. Just like to see her have a touch more dimension as I care compared to the heifer just ahead of her. Here's a big boned one that you like at the ground. She's got some big sound feet on her. Like the way this heifer travels, doesn't have quite the balance and look. Then we have a couple heifers again. Same thing as the last time. 
It's hard to put a heifer like this with this high quality this far down. I'd just like to change her from the hock to the ground. I'd like to give her a little more center rib. Then we find a little more center rib in this one and a really broody cow prospect. She wants to roll up on her hock, just uh, on her ankles just a touch. Doesn't balance up quite as nice. Then we come with a couple cattle that complete the class. Certainly nice on the stand still. I'd just like to change the way they go in terms of their structure on their feet and legs, but two really nice high quality cattle to complete the class. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from class 19, pulled senior heifer calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3687, NCC Rhea 2058 ET, owned by Madeline Norville of Tuttle, Oklahoma. Second place, entry 3685, KLL Elman Tula 22K ET, owned by Suter Clark of Gretna, Virginia. Third place, Brooke Bain of Lawton, Oklahoma, Fourth place goes to Gage Kramer of Waxahachie, Texas. Fifth place goes to Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Seventh place, Mason Reeder of Seguin, Texas. Eighth place goes to Conley Ward, Grant Ward and Addison Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. At this time, we have class 20 pulled senior heifer calves in the ring. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you just joining us in the Jim Norick Arena, the two classes that you see here in ring one and here in ring two for your Hereford and Angus shows, these will be the final two classes that we see before our special dedication here in just a few moments. So please be sure to join us and stay here with us in the Jim Norick Arena. Again, um, a really deep set of heifers, uh, comparatively so. I, I really like the top three heifers in this class. With that said, Amy and I really like the heifer that leads off and wins the class. Gives you such a good look from a profile here. So balanced, so nice through her head and neck and square built. She's got the right amount of bone and foot size under her. There's enough of this heifer when you get behind her. She's sound as she goes about the ring. Really a complete female, nice place to start. Really like the heifer that comes in next in line. Again, would have won a lot of classes she's been into today. Really good in the center of that rib cage. Great shape. She carries that depth back into the rear third of that rib cage. She's got, again, a really nice amount of bone and foot under. Square made enough product in her. Not quite as extended up front. Maybe just a tick more chest than our heifer that's going to win the class but really a nice complete female to come in second here. Nice female in third here, not quite probably as deep in the center of that rib cage or in the rear third of that rib as the heifer right in front of her. But a long sided heifer gives you a good look when this gentleman gets her set up, travels free and easy enough. Probably liked up front, just pull her apart a little in that little lower rib cage and chest as you view her from a three quarter angle here. But a very complete female again, fell in a really good class with a couple really nice heifers. Heifer that comes in next in line, more compact than the three heifers right in front of her, but a good balanced heifer, a female that's got a lot of Angus characteristic. I think there's enough rib shape and muscle here. I think she travels free and easy enough. Gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line, really good 
uh, rib shape in this heifer and muscle in this heifer. She gets plainer in that head, neck, and chest as you see her from a profile. Like to make her just a little freer and easier off those rear two. Then we get down to a couple really nice heifers for these young people, but they fell in a class with just not enough power and mass in these heifers to get them any higher. Well, congratulations over here in the Angus Ring results at a class 13H. Congratulations, our first place will go to back number 10, 729. That's Seldom Rest Sandy 3012, exhibited by Ann Dameron, Tawanda, Illinois. Second place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Jenkins Cattle Ranch, Dale, Indiana with EXAR Princess 3676. That's back number 10, 711. Third place in that class will go to Josie Brooke Phillips, Maysville, Kentucky, Circle M, Rockwall, Texas. Fourth place was exhibited by Keegan Caroline Maller of State Center, Iowa. Fifth place will go to Moore Cattle Company, Lebanon, Oklahoma. Sixth place in that class exhibited by Alexandra Duckworth, Greenville, Tennessee. And seventh place in that class, and congratulations, Jack Selmeyer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, over here in the Angus Ring, that's the last class you're going to see before our special dedication here in the Jim Newark Arena. Please stay here with us, and we'll be back momentarily. Nice class and two, uh, three cattle right here up on the top end that uh, become really difficult to sort for me. The one that wins the class just does so because she gives me the most three-dimensional look from the side and from behind. I just see the, the most product, the most hip, the most shape in this one. Uh, she's really nice in her bone work. She travels fairly well on her feet and legs. I think all three of these heifers, I'd like to widen them out a little bit as they travel. This one wants to get just a little bit outside on her on her outside toes, just a hair, uh, but not enough to get her into too much trouble here today. I just see enough more shape, enough more look in that cattle to go ahead and win the class. I like these next two heifers a lot as well, and this next heifer that's coming in uh, puts together a lot of nice things, really deep in terms of her rib and body. I'd like to see her have just a touch more pin width and as she stands a lot of times she wants to get just a little bit lazier in her back but man this is a high quality really nice heifer that's there in second. Same goes for the heifer in third. She paints a really nice picture from the side. She's dead level out of her hip and you like her behind her shoulders. I really like the top side of this female a tremendous amount. As I study her down low in comparison to the heifer especially the one that won the class I just don't see quite as much power I like to widen that one out, uh, out at the ground just a touch if I could, but I think a really high quality individual that paints a nice picture from the side. Then we come in again. This is awful hard when we get down to the uh, end of the class with heifers this high quality. This heifer certainly got some tools, some length, some doability. Heifer's really moderate framed and uh, stays in a nice package here. This heifer's got a ton of doability, maybe a little bit too much. I'd like to refine her just a touch up in through her head and neck if I could. Then a real pretty heifer comes in next. Uh, this one certainly got some balance and look. Where she gets into trouble for me is just in terms of movement. Maybe on both ends of her skeleton, I'd like to free her up just a touch if I could. Really nice class of cattle. Really good heifer to win. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from class 20, polled senior heifer calves. Congratulations. First place goes to back number 3701, PSC Helen 2050 ET owned by Kristen and Miranda Hansen of Shakota, Oklahoma. Second place goes to back number 3706, M.M. Bonnie 2300 ET, owned by Braden Mims of Lorenzo, Texas. Third place, congratulations, Blakely Steltzer of Oolaga, Oklahoma. Fourth place, Luke Hamlin of Weatherford, Texas. Fifth place goes to Leona, Elsie, and Carly Manternak of Bernard, Iowa. And sixth place goes to Brooke Main of Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to thank you all so much for joining us here in Oklahoma City. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Tyler Norvell, board member of the Cattlemen's Congress. Well, th thank you for being here today. Thank you for attending Cattlemen's Congress, and thank you for taking time uh, just a few minutes here to remember our chairman and the person that helped this show get started, Mr. Gerald Callahan. Jennifer and I were joking earlier in the office, he would absolutely kill us for pausing a cattle show for him. Uh, but a man of his stature, 
uh, his legacy, we felt like he deserved that. And on behalf of Jennifer and the family, they'd like to thank everyone in the cattle industry for your calls, your texts, your prayers, your acts of love and kindness. And I even want to go over and uh, thank you on behalf of the Cattlemen's Congress for your patience this week. Everybody's been so kind and cordial because they understand the hand we've been dealt. Uh, but Gerald would want us to put our nose down, our rear up, continue to move forward. And that's what we've tried to do, not only as the Cattlemen's Board, but each and every one here. Uh, but as we get started here at this tribute, we'd like to please uh, direct your attention to the board for a brief video at the memorial. You might remember uh, that we did an interview with Gerald about a month ago about his life. And uh, we put together some sound clips from him and a short slideshow uh, about Gerald talking about his life. My full name is Gerald Eldon Callahan, and uh, I was raised in the little town, well, not in the little town, but in Welch, Oklahoma. My mom and dad's uh, farm and ranch was 14 miles uh, northwest of Welch, and um, pretty, good, pretty good country. It's a little rocky up there, mm -hmm. but uh, it's pretty good ag country, and it's, uh, we're kind of on the edge of where the tame grass uh, uh, is east of there and from uh, there west is kind of the bigger ranches and the blue stem country and so we're kind of on the edge of that and I think it's important in the livestock business and the cattle business that we keep activity and commerce going and I'd like to thank Oklahoma City and all the people that helped make this possible we hope you've enjoyed Oklahoma City let's we're going to work this group and then the opens and thank you and hope to see you again I always think you can do better, and uh, you know uh, one of the one of the interesting, gratifying but frustrating parts of my job is I've never made a I've never bred a perfect bull or a perfect heifer yet, <laughs> and never will, and and it, because it always changes, and, and so I'm always excited about the next next calf crop. I'm always excited about the next set of matings and see how they turn out. I love watching cattle grow and develop and, and uh, really don't have many hobbies except cattle. And, um, and I, really, I really enjoy the cattle business. I enjoy the people in it and respect the people in it. Um, and uh, I really enjoy the, the, the pursuit, I guess it's that it is, the, the continual pursuit to make them better. We, as the Cattlemen's Congress Board of Directors, wanted to do the right thing to memorialize a guy like Gerald Callahan. And um, we couldn't decide what to do, what's the proper things to do. And uh, we talked to Jennifer, and one of Gerald's first visions for this show was to make sure that the Hereford and the Angus Open shows were on the same day, this day, at the same time. And today, we are going to... Uh, Name the award for the champion Angus Heifer in memory of Gerald Callahan and the, and the award for the champion Paul Herford Heifer in the name of Gerald Callahan forever. And we will have traveling trophies for those exhibitors, and that is one way we're going to memorialize Gerald. Another phone call I got immediately was from Gary Buckholtz, and Gary said, nobody loved a judging contest more than Gerald Callahan. And the first thing he said when he decided we were going to have Cattlemen's Congress, I looked at him and I said, we're not having a judging contest, are we? He said, we are absolutely having a judging contest. And Gary called me and he said, we have sponsored that thing every year and made sure it's happened. And he said, we're going to make sure it's going to happen forever. And we always want it to be called the Gerald Callahan Livestock Judging Contest at the Cattlemen's Congress. So those are going to be the two ways that we memorialize a man that was just larger than life and meant the world to each of us. Uh, Gerald had a vision for this show. His leadership was second to none. The things I've learned from him, I'll uh, never be able to replace. But as we move forward, I can promise you, uh, the Cattlemen's Congress Board, the folks behind this show are more committed than ever. And Gerald said from day one, this is gonna be the most exhibitor friendly, most affordable livestock show put on in the country. And that's our mission the exhibitor to make it a good experience.
will always make sure that this event is a show put on by cattlemen for cattlemen, and we're always going to make it better and improvement and look to your feedback. So we appreciate you being here. We appreciate the time, the money you spend to be here, and we're committed to you, the exhibitors in the cattle industry moving forward. As we close out, I'm gonna call on uh, one of Gerald's closest friends and colleagues and confidants, Mr. Donnie Robertson, to say a few words, and then uh, he'll say a blessing, and we'll get back to the show. Well, thank you, Tyler. And obviously, for so many, this has been a, a, a tough time and a tough couple of weeks, but, uh, you know, I thought uh, earlier today, sitting up in the stands, if you drove to Oklahoma City this past week and, and you didn't know who Gerald Callahan was, which would be very few, you certainly know now. And you know that the impact that he had uh, not only on the cattle business, but on people's lives. And he impacted so many people. He was a constant teacher. And if you listened, and at times, you might want to not listen, but if you listened, there was always a little nugget in there somewhere of his teachings. And he was passionate about it, and he had a love for this business and a love for people that not many of you probably knew. And I was talking to Jason Hoffman uh, and Cal Collier actually at the memorial service. And, and both of them said one thing. If you were fortunate enough to attend that, uh, the love that was in that building that day was enormous. And one thing that Jason said, and I would echo that, wouldn't it be nice if we could continue in our lives to pursue that love, to, to generate that love amongst all of us? We're all competitors, and we're all chasing that banner. But let's remember that, that life is very important, and maybe those banners at times isn't the most important. To love one another and to be kind and generous to all of us, I think we'd all be better human beings before that. And I think Gerald would be very proud of all of us if we pursued that. If you would now, if you would remove cover and we'll bow for a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just pause briefly uh, this afternoon uh, to lift you up. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for Ryan and Jennifer and Brian and Tracy and the Callahan family. We thank you for Gerald and, and all that he's done for the livestock industry, but probably more important what he's done for us as people. Dear God, I just ask that you continue to bless the family as they move forward, I continue to uh, just bless us all as we uh, continue uh, to deal with this great loss. But let us not forget, dear Lord, that uh, to keep the joy in our heart, the happiness in our lives, and to remember Gerald for who he was. He would want us to continue, dear God, and we will. And let's do it uh, with happiness and joy. And let us not forget, dear Lord, that life is short and death is certain. We lift you up and we praise you. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And I can't say enough about Gerald Callahan entrusting a Yankee like myself to be the voice of the Cattlemen's Congress. He left an impact on everyone. My condolences to the Callahan family. Well, let's have a cattle show, ladies and gentlemen. That's what Gerald would want. We're going to bring back that next class here in your Hereford ring and the next class here in your Angus ring.
Well, for those of you just joining us here in the Jim Norick Arena over in the Angus Ring, this is Class 14, your second to last class in Division Three of our Junior Heifer Cavs. Here's a tough class with uh, some challenges on the top end, and when the rubber meets the road, this female that wins this class just does so. She's the most complete. She handles herself the better. I like the way she handles her top line, her depth of rib, her volume, the shape and sweep of rib that she has, and the three-dimensional look that she gives me from the side just makes her come to the top. I think a really nice, complete, just good balance female there to win the class. The heifer that comes next is the most like her in terms of type and kind. She too has that uh, depth of rib and body, that cowy look to her. She has an advantage in bone of the heifer just behind her. I like her a touch better from her hock down to the ground. Uh, the heifer that most resembles the class winner stands here in second. The most different one is the heifer here in third. She's dark red color. She's got a lot of style and presence and look. I think a really neat breeding piece here that we have that's got a lot of cowiness, maternal look, and femininity. I uh, just need to stouten that one up quite a bit at the ground if I could. Give her a little bit more bone uh, work as you compare her to the two just above her. Heifer behind her does have a little bit more bone, and that's what I like about her. She too has the middle uh, that resembles the class winners in first and second a little bit more. Where she runs into trouble for me is uh, her movement off of her hind leg. I'd just like to free her up quite a bit on that uh, hind leg structure if I could let her reach out a little bit more if I could but I think again we go down in quality from end to end the heifer that's really correct in her top line that leaves the ring then we got a moderate size sensibly uh, made kind of female here that's going to come second to last really good just doesn't have the balance and presence then we find a little more balance and presence in the last one I'd just like to stouten that one up in her lower third if I could 
here in the Angus class. Really, again, a, a solid set of heifers top to bottom here. We're going to start off with a female that really on a profile just gives Amy and I that great Angus female look. I really like the character in her head. I like her neck. She's maybe just a tick squared off in her brisket, but she's still clean enough there. She carries a lot of depth out of that, uh, that chest into that fore rib. Carries it back to the center of that rib with a lot of shape and dimension up into her rear flank. She's good down her top and hip. When you get out behind her, she won't disappoint you. Really like on the standstill how she puts her four feet down. And when you get her in motion, sure travels free and easy enough. Heifer that comes in next in line does so from a phenotype and structure standpoint. Like how she's laid in in the blade of her shoulder and the point of her shoulder, the balance she shows you. Not near the bone size and foot size of the heifer right in front of her. Not quite the rib shape still has plenty of rib just not as much as that heifer that's going to lead out the class and definitely not doesn't carry it back into the rear third travels free and easy enough a, a logical heifer to come in here in second the efforts in third I, gives you this killer look when this young lady gets her set up. She's fit impeccably. She's really good down her top and square. She's long-sided. Uh, there was a part of me when they came in that I would have told you this was a class winner. I think the only thing about this heifer that drops her to the third for me, as she gets motoring along, I think she's missing her stride by a few inches. And if she could just be a little more flexible off both ends, I'd probably move her to the top of the class. Same said for the gentleman heifer that comes in next in line big bodied female with a lot of products square larger frame kind of heifer but still built really good as we get her in motion though I would just like her to be freer and easier as she goes to get her any higher big old powerful heifer that has a lot of quality comes in next in line here compared to the heifers in front of her just gets a little coarser in her build a little plainer in her head and neck the last heifer comes in line here Long sided, long hipped heifer just needs to be more of this heifer. Well, back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 21, Polt Senior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3719, Wildcat Polish 219 ET, owned by Brady, Nicholas, and Lauren Jones of Darlington, Wisconsin. Second place goes to entry 3711, LCC 0183, Miss Penny 76KET, owned by Emerson and Breyer Fleischer. Third place, Kara Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. Fourth place, and congratulations, McKenna, McKenna and Lauren Gatz of Fairview, Kansas. Fifth place, Carly, Elsie, and Leona Manternak of Bernard, Iowa. Sixth place goes to Haley Ferguson of Windsor, Missouri, and seventh place, Creighton Carpenter of Leedy, Oklahoma. At this time, we've got your first and seconds out in the ring, and we'll select your champion and reserve, Pold Senior Heifer Calf. As we come down, we've just done it all day. We we come down to the divisions, and we're so happy with the lineup, and it makes it challenging, no doubt, uh, because we got all the elite ones out here, or at least the ones that we thought were in their classes, and they separated out from a lot of good cattle. But we're happy with all six of these heifers. Again, we'd take them all home. I think they all offer the breeding tools that we need and what we can do with this breed. Uh, there's one heifer out here that uh, just kind of excels in terms of look, and we've liked her an awful lot, and Cruz is going to show you which one we like to win this division. And congratulations, your champion, Pold Senior Heifer Calf. Comes out of class 19, entry 3687, NCC RIA 2050 ADT, owned by Madeline Norvell of Tuttle, Oklahoma. And congratulations, your reserve champion, Pold Senior Heifer Calf, comes out of class 20, goes to back number 3701, PSC Helen 2050 ET, owned by Kristen and Miranda Hansen of Shakota, Oklahoma. Once again, congratulations to all these Hereford exhibitors. We'll now switch back over to our horn division with class 22 horned senior heifer calves. 
Well, congratulations. Back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 14. First place went to back number 10734. EXAR Frontier Gal 3665, exhibited by Clara, Sin Clara Sinclair of Williamsburg, Iowa. Second place in that class went to Josie Brooke Phillips and Circle M with BNWZ Black Cap 3656. Third place in that class, exhibited by Alexis Kohling of Bowling Green, Missouri. Fourth place went to Jake Allison, Yukon, Oklahoma. Fifth place went to Rob Oakley of Livingston, Tennessee. And sixth place, Brianna Jones of Eustis, Texas. Now in the ring, class 15. Class 15 will be your final class before Division Three.
Well, this is awful challenging here, the top end of this class. I can see a guy uh, going back and forth on these top two heifers quite a bit, but at the end of the day, uh, I just like the way that this heifer is built a tremendous amount. She's real fresh looking. Uh, she paints a really nice picture from the side. I like the way she travels, and probably the difference for me is just extra chest width that you get in this one. Uh, a touch more width at the ground. I honestly wish she traveled just a little bit wider from behind as well uh, for all that shape that she has up high. But she does have an advantage in with the chest and a little bit of an advantage in terms of uh, correctness and neck and just a little more maternal look for me here today. This heifer that comes next is nice and she's fit to a T. She looks extremely good. You get her parked on to the side. She's got a tremendous amount of depth of rib and volume and she's got a lot of shape up high. Where she runs into trouble for me is up in the ground, especially in her chest. She just wants to get pretty closed and pretty narrow there. And as I watch her go away, I, for as much this heifer appears to have to her, I just like to see her a little wider at the ground if I could. That's a high quality, really good heifer there that comes in second. We left this heifer in the lineup for a long time because of her added look. She's very fresh feminine. She's very nice in her shoulder. In fact, she excels the effort just ahead of her in her shoulder and neck. There's just not quite as much to her as you compare her to the heifer just in front of her. Here we come with another really long, balanced, good, feminine featured sort of female. Just doesn't give me enough three-dimensional look when I get behind her. I like to give that one a touch more lower quarter. Then we come with the heifer next. This one's deep and broody and very, actually fairly sound in terms of her movement. She just doesn't give us quite the balance and quite the look of the heifers that we see above her a little higher in her tail head as well. Heifer that completes the class, she's the greenest in here. This heifer just needs a little more time. She's really correct in her top line. I'd just like to see a little more mid-rib in that female if I could. Forget on the Angus side, really a deep class. We got three heifers on the top of this class that Amy and I really like, all three of them. The heifer's going to win the class just uh, so from a standpoint of this profile she gives you there, how upheaded she is, how beautiful fronted she is with a really nice Angus head on her. She's got enough rib shape and dimension, travels free and easy enough in a square bill. When you get out behind her, she's not the thickest one out here, but she still has plenty of muscle. Uh, a lot to like about the female. I think maybe just a little stouter female from a muscle standpoint comes in next. Again, so maternal looking through her front end. She's clean through her chest. Good bone and foot under this female. Maybe a tick more shoulder than our heifer that's going to start off the class, but still just such a complete female with a lot of good in her. Amy and I saw a lot of good in this female that comes in next in line, too. She just gives you a great look when that gentleman gets her set up, so appealing through her front end. When you get her in motion here, she's probably a little harder in her loin with her tail head up in the air just a little bit more. Maybe a little narrower based when you get out behind her going away from you. This is a really nice heifer that comes in next in here. So balanced and so much muscle and power in this heifer as you get out behind her. Again, a big bone, big footed female that's so attractive through her front end. When you put her in motion, probably not quite as soft and easy as putting those feet on the ground as the heifer's right in front of her. That's what probably got her down here. But that's a high quality heifer that could have done a lot of good in some other classes. Um, then we get down to heifers that to me, just they're really quality females. They just got little things in their structure and the condition that just well, they need to change to get higher today. And back over in the Hereford ring, we have your results from class 22, Horn Senior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3907, BACC 935, Kelly 264, owned by Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama, and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Second place, back number 3906, BACC 25, Landry's Candy 271, exhibited by Landry Allen of Nakona, Texas. Third place goes to Kaya Rhodes of Ada, Oklahoma. Fourth, Atley and Aiden Kleinman of Wentworth, Missouri. Fifth place, and congratulations, goes to Shelby and Bailey Pearl of Duquan, Illinois. And sixth place goes to Ashton Gamble of Canton, Oklahoma. At this time, we've got class 23 Horn Senior Heifer Calves in the ring. 
We'll back over in the Angus ring. Results out of class 15 before division three. First place went to back number 10749. Seldom rests Cassandra 3009, exhibited by Mercedes Faree Sullivan, Indiana. Second place in that class went to back number 10757. BC2 Henning Sandy 0223, exhibited by Josie Phillips and Circle M. Third place and congratulations, back number 10761. That's Seldom Rest Farms, Niles, Michigan, and Moore Cattle Company, Lebanon, Oklahoma. Fourth place in that class, exhibited by Hadley Hendrickson, Farmland, Indiana. Fifth place went to Enright Farms, Renfrew, Ontario. Sixth place and congratulations, Macy Bartlow of Macomb, Illinois. And seventh place went to Kurt Zimmerman of Camargo, Illinois. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in, and our judges will select their champion reserve, Division Three Junior Heifer Cavs. Two really high-quality heifers here in this class, and they're different in terms of their type and kind. This is hard. This is really hard. Uh, because these heifers are both really, really good. To see enough more show ring presence and look and balance and eye appeal in this heifer that wins the class. Uh, she's really good in her center rib. She gives us a nice look from the side. Uh, just a female that has a lot of presence and style and look, and I think that's where uh, she beats a heifer in second. Now, that's not taking anything away from that one because I see just as much bone, I see just as much rib, and really in terms of muscle shape, I don't know that there's a whole lot of difference in these two cattle. So when it comes down to it, I just elected to go with one that's a little easier to look at from the side. I think these two are both really high quality cattle and it's really challenging to place the two. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 23, Horn Senior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3913, KJ TWJ 907E Martini 936 KET, owned by Paige Lemonager of Hudson, Illinois. Second place goes to back number 3909, BNC Miss Texas 23307K, owned by Ella Macias of Canadian, Texas. I'm next be looking for class 24 Horn Senior Heifer Calves. Last class in the Horn Senior Heifer, Heifer Calf Division.
two really high quality heifers that we have on the top end of this class and there's just enough more cattle here in this heifer that wins she's uh she's stout but she puts it together in a really nice package and she blends from end to end she's got just enough bone and enough shape and just enough more three-dimensional look i really like that heifer that's in second the way she's built but she'd fit inside this one just in terms of overall shape and dimension and I think travel-wise, they both travel really good, and I don't see a problem there. I just see enough more cattle in the heifer that wins the class. But I certainly like the balance, the look, the extension, the correctness, the top line of the heifer in second. Just need a little bit more of her here to, today to compete. That's where this heifer next does have a lot more to her uh, than the heifer that left the ring, but she doesn't balance up quite as nice. I like to change her from a hawk to the ground and give her a little bit more of a three-dimensional look back in through her hip if I could, but that's a nice heifer, very high quality. This big heifer that comes in next, uh, you certainly got to admire the growth, the length, the extension. She's got a lot of presence and eye appeal. This is just a heifer for me. Needs a bit more mid-rib as you compare to the cattle above her. She needs a little bit more behind her shoulders. I'm afraid that one's just going to outgrow her frame and need a little bit more to her when it's all said and done. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 24, Horn Senior Heifer Calves. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3924, RER 36G KC 244K, owned by Cayenne Eck of Putnam, Oklahoma. Second place goes to back number 3923, BK CMCC Cash Deposit 2045K ET, owned by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa. Third place, Goes to Hendricks Cattle Company of Troy, Alabama, and Hurricane Hefty Ranch of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And fourth place, and congratulations, goes to Carlisle Brayman of Refugio, Texas. This time, we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserve, Horn Senior Heifer Calf. Okay, uh, sorry in this division, we're taking a little extra time. Uh, definitely been the deepest division of the day for Amy and I, kind of what we expected as we get out here. Really a lot of high quality females within this division. I, I think every one of these class winners are really nice. Um, and honestly, Amy and I have not settled on how we're gonna finish it off here. And I'm sorry we're taking some extra time, but I'm sure the day as the classes get into the older classes will get smaller and we'll move along here. The heifer that won the, the first class of the division, probably the stoutest female in the class when you view her out from behind, big bone, big footed. When they got her fit and pulled together here, this young lady gets her pulled together, gives you a great look. She's powerful down her top and out her hip, plenty of muscle in her, a lot of balance. When you get her in motion, I don't think she's quite as flexible off either end as the heifers behind her. Uh, the gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line just gives you such a great look. Uh, she's getting a little ornery right now facing that out gate, but when she's set up and like in class, she just is so up-headed and beautiful fronted, good bone, good footed, great rib design in this female. She travels free and easy. She's really good down at her top and at her hip. Is she the widest based one? Maybe not as a couple other heifers, but it's still good enough for all the quality that heifer brings, and she's sure in consideration to win this division. The young lady's heifer that won the next class just put so many unique pieces together in a very nice package. She's so balanced on a profile and square made. She's so angular and, and so angular. 
built up through her front end. She's long sided with a lot of muscle in her, good bone and good foot. She's probably the most moderate female from a frame size standpoint, but she's darn sure big enough. There's enough of her. As she goes around the ring, she's flexible. Is she quite as wow factor as maybe a couple heifers on the profile here? No. Boy, that's it. she still has got such a great look when you get it here. Uh, the young ladies have her that won the next class. Easily the deepest sided, biggest rib female out here. Tremendous shape and dimension to the center of that rib. A female that travels soft and free enough. She's really good at her hip with enough muscle in her. Is she as long-sided as some of the heifers out here? Probably not. I, for me, I probably deem her the shorter-sided of the heifers out here. Maybe just a tick squared off in her brisket, but still so Angus-looking, just so sound. A, a lot of good maternal look. Um, the heifer, the one in the last class, is just gives you a wow factor when you get her on her profile here. So appealing through her front end, so up-headed. Good down her top and square out her hip. She's a heifer that's got plenty of bone in her. She's really got a lot of rib shape with balance. When you get out behind her, darn sure enough muscle in this female. Um, she's a heifer that when you put her in motion, she travels free and easy. Maybe isn't quite as flexible at her hock as a couple of the other heifers, but again, I'm picking on all of them because this one's definitely in conversation to win this division. Um, uh, for Amy and I, honestly, here, there's three heifers out here we like a lot. Um, we're going to go out here and have one more conversation, and we'll go ahead and pick your division winner in reserve. Thank you. We're ready to pick another division over here on the Hereford side, and I think we got three really good individuals to look at. I'm happy with all of them. Uh, they, they put together the things that we're looking for, structure, balance, look, with uh, plenty of muscle and shape. There's one effort uh, for us that just puts everything together into one complete package. She's one that's got the power and the shape, and uh, yet she's feminine and uh, just has the look and balance that we're looking for. Cruz is going to show you which one that is. And congratulations, your champion, Horton Senior Heifer Kev, comes out of class 24, back number 3924, RER 36GKC244K, owned by Kyanek of Putnam, Oklahoma. And congratulations, your reserve champion, Horn Senior Heifer Kev, comes out of class 23, entry 3913, KJ TWJ 907E Martini 936KE, owned by Paige Lemonager of Hudson, Illinois. Once again, congratulations to these Hereford exhibitors, and we'll move on into our polled late summer yearling classes. Well, congratulations back in the Angus ring. Results out of Division Three Junior Heifer Cavs. Your champion will come out of Class 12. That was back number 10696 BNWZ. Sarah's Dream 3184, exhibited by Mercedes Faree Sullivan, Indiana, and bred by Caden Nowatsky in Michigan City, Indiana. Reserve in that division. We'll come out of class 13. That was back number 10729. Selden Rest Sandy 3012. Owned by Ann Dameron, Tawanda, Illinois, and bred by Selden Rest Farms, Niles, in Michigan. Congratulations once again to all of those in Division 3. We're now going to welcome in class 16 into the Angus Ring.
here in uh, the December class here. We're going to start with the freer, easier moving heifer of the two. Um, this is a very attractive heifer through her front end. She's good down her top and square out her hip. Really like the shape and dimension to the center of her rib with enough muscle in this female. And she travels the ring freer and easier for Amy and I as you put them in motion here. Gentleman's heifer here gives you a nice look here from a profile. She's sure broody through her front end with enough bone and foot. She's a heifer that definitely has balance when you get out behind her here. As you get her in motion, she just needs more slope to that shoulder, needs that knee set back in her, and then more flex at that hawk as she goes about the ring. And we come back in, do a class over here in a class of four, and as good as all four of these cattle are, I think we have just a dominant class winner. I mean, this one is good. This is a heater right here in my eyes, and uh, I just love the way that this heifer blends everything and puts it all together. She's got the rib, she's broody, she's feminine, she's maternal, yet she's still stout. This is the kind of cattle that we're looking for. I love the angles of the heifer, like the way she travels. She's fresh in terms of her appearance, like the outward turn to her rib cage. You could just go on and on about a heifer like that. I think she's awful good. And that's not taking anything away from this heifer in second, because when you get her away from that other heifer, this female's got a lot of good tools. This one balances up really nice from the side. Young lady gets a when she gets her part, she is set up about as perfect as she could be right now. She does a tremendous job showing this effort. She, too, has a lot of outward turn to her rib gauge, a lot of balance and look. She just doesn't quite put it in the package uh, that the class winner does here today, but that's an awful nice female. The next two cattle that come up in line are very good, especially on the standstill. Where they run into some trouble for me is just in terms of their locomotion and the way they go, especially the heifer that completes the class. I really like this heifer on the standstill, but as you can see, even on the standstill, she's just a little bit too straight in that hawk for me, and she just won't reach out and make her stride, but I think a really nice heifer that's really good on the stop. Well, congratulations. Back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 16. First place was exhibited by Whitney Ann Meyer, Clinton, Tennessee, with three aces, Georgina, 91-82. Second place in that class will go to EXAR Princess, 2532, exhibited by John Allison of Yukon, Oklahoma. Now in the ring is class 17. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 25, polled late summer yearling females. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3729, Spearmint 2233, owned by Landry Allen of Nakona, Texas. Second place in that class goes to back number 3735, NCC Addison 2043 ET, owned by Sailor and Madeline Norville of Tuttle, Oklahoma. Third place goes to Abbey Hill Farm of Richmond, Ontario, and fourth place, and congratulations, Shelby Pearl and Bailey Pearl of Duquin, Illinois. At this time, we've got class 26 polled early summer yearling females in the ring. Two really high quality cattle out here, and there's some give and take in the two, but there's just enough more freshness and balance and eye appeal look. And I think uh, a touch more three-dimensional look to this heifer by nature, uh, like the outward turn to her rib cage, I like her upper hip shape, 
blends in a little nicer up through our front end, just gives us a lot more look. Uh, by nature, I like the condition of the heifer in first a touch better than I do the heifer in second. Now, the advantage in bone work and foot probably goes to the heifer in second without a doubt. When you start at the ground up, this heifer's got a tremendous amount of bone. I like her from her hock to the ground. She balances up extremely nice. Uh, just maybe a little bit, uh, like to freshen that one up a touch if I could, as I compare it to the class winner, but a really nice high quality female there in second. And your results from class 26, polled early summer yearling females. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3742, PSC SCC Athena 2038 ET, owned by Peyton Hartill of Arbuckle, California. And second place and congratulations goes to back number 3740, HJM Scarlet KO4ET, owned by Hudson and Finley Myers of Edmond, Oklahoma. Now be looking to bring back those first and seconds, and we'll select your champion polled intermediate yearling females. Well, we got two really good heifers out here uh, for the division lineup. Actually, we got four really good heifers. The heifers behind them are, are very, very good as well. But I think these two right here are very high quality, and I think a person's kind of splitting hairs uh, between the two of them. I, I think you see a lot of cowiness, broodiness, maternal look in the heifer in the front side, and then the heifer that won that second class has got a lot of power, dimension, class, uh, show ring presence. Uh, for me, it's close, and I'll have crews show you the one that I like the best in this division. And congratulations, your champion polled intermediate yearling female comes out of class 25, goes to back number 3729, Spearmint 2233, owned by Landry Allen of Nakona, Texas.
And congratulations, your reserve champion polled intermediate yearling female comes out of class 26, goes to back number 3742, PSC SCC Athena 203080 T, owned by Peyton Hartill of Arbuckle, California. Once again, congratulations to these Hereford exhibitors. We will move now to our horned late summer yearling class. Here in the Angus uh, ring, the heifer that's going to win is just so complete. I mean, when you get this heifer on a profile, is she the biggest one in the class? No, but there's plenty of November heifer here, and she's so balanced, and her muscle and her rib just fit so well with her bone size and her foot size, and as she's appealing through her front end, she square out her hip, she travels free and easy. It was just a really nice and easy place for Amy to, and I to start the class with. The young lady's heifer that comes in next, so appealing through her front end, big rib in this female. When you get out behind her, she is well built down her top and out through her hip, down into her stifles, a class winner. Probably not, gets probably just a little hollow when you get under her hooks and pins down into her stifle. When you put her in motion and she gets it to a nice pace, she travels free and easy enough. Just a logical second place heifer. Um, the heifer that comes in next in line doesn't have all the mass and muscle and rib shape of the two heifers right in front of her. She's a little lower performing heifer of the heifers in front of them. But from a standpoint, she's just a little greener, not as much of her. But from a structure standpoint, she has to fall here. She travels free and easy enough. She's a heifer that's built right down her top and not in her hip. Amy and I really like this heifer that comes in next. When this young lady gets her parked here, we love the stoutness and the look she gives you, the really good rib design with a lot of muscle. She travels free and easy enough. The issue for Amy and I, when you get around in front of this heifer, there's just a lot of shoulder in this heifer. We just need to lay that blade into her tighter, lay her in at that point of the shoulder and expand her in her forerib to be able to move her up. But do love the look and the power of this female. The heifer that comes in next in line gives you a real nice Angus female look here. When you get her in motion, she's rigid in her top and a little broken her loin. Larger framed heifer that comes in next in line, enough rib shape and muscle in this female, but a female that doesn't travel near free and easy enough to get her any higher. As we get down the line, some heifers that are lacking some performance or and maybe not quite the structural integrity we're looking for. We got a real broody, uh, nice sized female heifer that comes in next. Got a pile of mid rib and rear rib depth. Uh, just a really nice female that's a, a single entry in this class. Uh, if I could, I'd like to freshen her up a little bit, tone her up a touch in terms of her muscle shape. But uh, I think a really nice heifer that's got a lot of good pieces. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 27, horn late summer yearling females. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3931, Mav Cotton's Elvira 264KET, owned by Addison Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. Up next, be looking for class 28, horned early summer yearling females. Back to the Angus ring, results out of class 17, your final class before senior heifer calf division one. First place went to back number 10793, that's Sol Ellie, 2571K, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Second place in that class will go to Ella Brooks of Provincetown, Illinois, with Dameron C5, Lucy 2178, back number is 10796. Third place in that class will go to back number 10798, Seldom Rest Bardot, 2214, exhibited by William Manning. Fourth place went to Lauren Wolter. Fifth place went to Austin Nowatsky. Sixth place in that class, Briley Roberts. Seventh place, Camden Upchurch. Eighth place, exhibited by Benjamin LaRavia. And ninth place in that class went to Asa Anderson. Now in the rings, your senior heifer calf, Division One.
here in the November, December division. I think the numbers weren't huge, but good quality in these females. Uh, these two class winners, really nice females. Amy and I really like this heifer that won the first class for her length of side and length of hip. There's still plenty of rib shape in this female. Maybe not quite as deep in that rear third of her uh, body to balance up quite like the heifer that won the second in class, but a free and easy moving kind of heifer that really gives you a great uh, a Angus female look. Uh, Really within class, Amy and I really like this heifer that won the uh, November class. Just love the balance and look of this female. She puts together a lot of things that I consider are really good for an Angus female with longevity to go out in life and be productive. She's good bone and foot size. She has tremendous rib with really good balance. She has enough power built into her, yet she's laid in at the blade of that shoulder really nice. Uh, when this young lady gets her put together right here, gives you a really good look. Uh, I think it's a really nice pair of class winners, but there is a heifer out here for Amy and I that just really suits us. And Amy, I'll go get her for your division and then we'll look for reserve. Well, congratulations, your senior heifer calf, Division One, over in the Angus ring. We'll go to back number 10793. That's Sol Ellie 2571K, bred known by Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. This is a tough class and uh, some things to sort through here. I'll try to explain uh, to you how we see these females. The heifer that wins uh, just gives three-dimensional shape here, especially from her uh, from the side. And you look at this heifer up in her hip and down in through her lower core. That's her advantage of the heifer that's there in second. Now the heifer in second probably has an advantage in shoulder, chest, and front end, but uh, this time I'm gonna elect to go with a little bit more stoutness, a touch more power. I think she leaves you with a touch more base width and she definitely has more width out of her pins, just a really nice shaped female. This one paints a nice picture from the side. You like her top line, the length of body and extension that she has. She's laid in a little smoother in her shoulder. Where she runs into trouble for us is just that she she just gets a little flatter in her hip. She wants to get a little more closed in her pins, and especially down low, I'd just like to power that one up a little bit more in terms of her muscle shape, but that's a high quality female. It's really good in her top line. I like this heifer a lot in third, and it's a shame to have to put one this good down here right now because I think she's really, really nice. This female, to me, uh, in terms of condition, is just right. She's got a lot of show ring presence. She might be just a little bit too full today because when she gets her stop, her top line actually goes back down into her. But when you get her up on the move, she just wants to get up in her spine just a little bit, right in the middle of her back and dip in that loin. Uh, just throws her off balance when she's on the move. But I think that's a really high quality female. Unfortunately for this young lady, this is a really nice female. It's real moderate in terms of her type and kind. She's built really good. I just need to see a little bit more cattle when I compare her to the, to the heifer just above her, but a good built one that's got some balance and some tools. Well, back to the Angus ring, reserve in that first division of senior heifer calves. Back number was 10779, three aces, Georgina 9182, exhibited by Whitney and Meyer, Clinton, Tennessee. Now in the Angus ring, class 18. 
And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from Class 28, Horned Early Summer Yearling Females. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 3934, Purple HB Finley 96 KET, owned by Austin, Tessa, and McKenna Smith of Hubertus, Wisconsin. Second place goes to 3935, OLY HZS Tommy K 278 ET, owned by Maddie O'Leary of Weatherford, Texas. Third place goes to Katherine Coleman of Modesto, California, and fourth, McKenna Rogers of Solon, Iowa. At this time, we brought back your first and seconds, and we'll select your champion and reserved horned intermediate yearling female. We come down to the division here. We didn't have a whole lot of numbers uh, in this particular division. We had a single entry and then a class of four there that completed uh, that division. I think uh, we got two really nice heifers out here to choose from. There's one that just excels in terms of stoutness, power, rib, and bone, and Cruz is going to show you which one we like to win this division. And congratulations, your champion horned intermediate yearling female comes out of class 28, entry 3934, Purple HB Finley 96 KET, owned by Austin, Tessa, and McKenna Smith of Hubertus, Wisconsin. And your reserve champion horned intermediate yearling female comes out of class 28 with back number 3935, OLYHZS Tommy K 278 ET, owned by Maddie O'Leary of Weatherford, Texas. Again, congratulations to these Hereford exhibitors, and we'll be looking for class 29 Pold Spring yearling females. And once again, just a reminder to all of our Hereford exhibitors and those of you watching in the stands and online, in between our polled and horned female champion drive, we will name your 2024 Herf Hereford Herdsman of the Year. So be sure to be here for during the champion drive when we will name your 2024 Hereford Herdsman of the Year.
Really a nice set of October heifers here. Uh, Amy and I are going to start with the most flexible heifer in the class for Amy and I. Love the rib shape and dimension to this female. When you get her put together in a profile, really gives you a really good balanced look with a lot of substance to her. Is she the most freak necked one? Maybe not, but she's still got a very broody, feminine female look in her. And she just travels so free and easy compared to the heifer right behind her. The heifer right behind her gives you that killer look when this gentleman gets her set up on a profile. She is more appealing through her front end. She's a heifer that has plenty of substance to her. When you get out behind her, she's really wide down her top. She's good out her hip and, and in her stifle. When you get her in motion, she's just a little more rigid spined. And to me and Amy, she probably is about a couple inches shorter covering her stride than the heifer right in front of her. Gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line, really good brood cow look to her from a profile really deep in the center of that rib, carries that depth in both directions into those flanks, square out her hip. Again, when we put her in motion, we think she's a little steeper at her shoulder and straighter at her knee. The young gentleman's heifer that comes in next in line, really a long-sided, feminine, fresh-made kind of female. She's good down her top and square out her hip. For Amy and I, we don't think there's as much heifer here as the heifer's right in front of her. She gets a little shallow in the rear third of her body and then when we get her in motion we'd like to see her just a tick more flexible in that rear hawk young ladies have her that comes in next in line a deep broody looking female she's good down her top like to see her flex all four joints just a little better as we put her in motion the same can be said for the heifer right behind her. Get down to a, a, a smaller framed heifer, not highest performer, not as much of her. Heifer here uh, that comes next just needs to be freer and easier. And back over in the Angus ring, we've got your results from the first class of Senior Heifer Calf Division Two. Congratulations, first place goes to back number 10, 802, Seldom Rest Sandy 2210. Owned by Josie Brooks Phillips of Maysville, Kentucky, Circle M of Rockwell, Texas. Second place in that class, and congratulations, goes to back number 10, 810, BRDG Pinup Gal 229. Exhibited by Wyatt Dewberry of Alton, Texas. Third place goes to John Allison of Yukon, Oklahoma. Fourth place and congratulations goes to Kelsey Ray Thies of Leavenworth, Kansas. Fifth place and congratulations goes to Alexandria Duckworth of Greenville, Tennessee. Sixth goes to Maddie Smith of Athens, Texas. Seventh and congratulations Luke Zimmerman of Camargo, Illinois. And eighth place goes to Sadie Plagg of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Once again, congratulations to these exhibitors. Well, I know the temperature didn't change in here, but it feels pretty warm to me now after having to sort through uh, this class of heifers because I think these are awfully, awfully good. And uh, as much as I enjoy judging and as much as I enjoy sorting the cattle this is very tough and very challenging and when you do sort the, the big things and you get right down to it uh, these were the two heifers that hit me the hardest when they hit the ring and I'll be honest with you I was going to use the heifer in second when they first hit the ring just because of that dark red cherry color the bone work the midrib that that heifer has in the show ring presence the more I studied them and the more I looked at them 
this female that's going to win this class just has too much more dimension and shape to her up high. I like her better out of her hip. I just see a touch more width of skeleton in that one. I see more pin width. I see more shape and dimension in her lower quarter. And then she does that and actually blends better up in through her front end. She's nicer in her front end as well. I think just a really high quality heifer that's got a pile of show ring presence. She's dead level out of her hips. She's really good behind her shoulders. And so I think it's a really good pair of cattle. Now the heifer that comes in second, we touched on some of her qualities already, but man, what a hip and a hind leg and a, and a pretty picture that she paints from the side. This is an awfully nice, high quality female. The problem with uh, her for me when I get behind her and I compare her to the class winner, I just don't see enough shape. I don't see enough top in that female. I don't see enough pin width and lower quarter as I compare to the heifer that just left the ring. But that's an awful good individual that's capable of winning a pile of shows. That's a really nice heifer. I really like this female that's in third, and I told him when I pulled her in third, I liked her a lot. But this one is built extremely well. You love her mid-rib, and she too has a really nice shape to her back in through her hip. She maintains a lot of width and gives you that three-dimensional look. The longer this one stood, and uh, especially when we were looking at him from the profile, I, I actually like this heifer a little bit more when we put her on the move because she picks that top up and goes. But when she was standing over here, she just wanted to give me that appearance like she was running downhill, wanted to come apart uh, right behind her shoulders. Same goes for the next heifer. I love the shape. I love the balance and look. That heifer is plenty capable of winning some big shows uh, on a more regional level. She just runs into a lot of competition. She, too, wanted to break behind her shoulders just a touch as we let them stand. The next heifer coming up in line, plenty of length of body and extension. She's really good in her top line. Doesn't have enough lower third, not, not enough lower core order for me. Then we wind up with the class with a heifer that's got plenty of shape and dimension. Uh, she just doesn't have enough behind her shoulders, not quite enough depth of ribbon body. Excellent class of cattle. Really like those heifers on the top end. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 29, pole to spring yearling females. Congratulations. First place goes to entry 3747, GCC ML Cruella 800K ET, owned by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Second place, back number 3746, Hog KLD Monique 413K ET, owned by Maddie Jenkins of Athens, Texas. Third place, and congratulations, goes to Olivia Neal of Osgood, Indiana. Fourth place, Grady Kramer of Waxahachie, Texas. Fifth place goes to Crew and Kara Cummins of Hollis, Oklahoma. And sixth place, Liana, Elsie, and Carly Manternak of Bernard, Iowa. Once again, congratulations to these Hereford exhibitors. And we've got Class 30, Pold Spring Yearling Females in the Ring.
Well, we got two cattle here that are tough to split as well. I think these two heifers uh, do a lot of good things. This heifer, as we get them set up from the side, I just see enough more look and profile, a little touch more uh, extension. I like the way this one's neck comes out of the top side of her shoulder just a touch better than I do. The heifer in seconds wanting to be a little bit lazy headed today and, and just not quite wanting to show herself off. And this female here uh, gives us a good balanced look from the and does so with enough shape and enough uh, power and dimension down low. I think both these heifers are plenty powerful in terms of their muscle shape. I like this heifer and the, the round rib shape that she has in her, the power uh, that she has up high. She, like I said before, she's a female that just uh, a lot of times wants to sort of give you the appearance that she wants to run downhill. She just gets a little shorter, a little more jammed up up in that front end. This is the advantage of the next heifer that comes next is her length of body and extension, very smooth in her shoulder, and you like the head and neck and the, and the femininity of that female. I'd just like to give her a touch more power if I could, give her a touch more hip and a, and a hair more muscle down low. Next effort come up in line is real moderate in terms of her frame size. She's a good uh, structured sort of animal as well. She just doesn't have quite as much power and performance and punch as the cattle we see above her. This is a really good made one here that I think is going to make an excellent cow. Uh, just like to freshen her up a little bit. She just gives me a little staler sort of appearance, but you like the uh, utter development that that heifer has. I think she's going to make a really nice cow for that young lady. Here on the uh, Angus side on the Octobers, uh, we're going to start with a combination heifer for Amy and I. When this young man gets her pulled together on a profile here, heifer gives you a really good look. She's good boned and good footed. She's long sided. She for Amy and I travels the free and easiest as of any of the heifers in the ring. Uh, is she as deep in the rear third of her rib cage as some heifers we've used today? Possibly not, but I think that for the way she travels, the structure of this heifer, it's enough to let her be the class winner. Heifer that comes in next in line, a little deeper side, especially in the center of that rib, and probably carries it into each ribs really well. She's square built. She's a heifer that starts losing some of that femininity as she gets a little uh, shorter in her front end and then when we put her in motion Amy and I'd like to see her reach better off that front end she's a little steep in that shoulder up and uh, upright in her knee uh, the next effort comes in line Amy and I really prefer on the stand still here we love the beautiful look this female gives you she's really clean necked and nice up through her front end good down her top and enough rib shape and dimension with great balance when we get her in motion she wants to hawk in from behind and she just doesn't quite flex in that knee or in that rear hawk like the heifers above her do today. The next heifer in line gives you a great look from a profile, very balanced and square made, big rib cage in this female. Fairly narrow base, she gets too narrow in her chest, too narrow in her foreflank, she stands pretty closed up up front. You see it when she gets in motion. I just like to pull her apart in the front part of that rib to get her any higher. Another heifer here with enough rib shape and dimension, good down her top, gets coarser in that head, coarser in that neck and chest. I'd like to see her just a little more feminine and maternal there. Then we get down to a larger framed heifer here, to the heifer that just needs, needs to travel freer and easier, and we get down to two uh, lighter performing heifers. There's just not as much of these heifers today. Back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 30, Pold Spring Yearling Females. Congratulations, first place went to back number 3767, TR8424, Miss Merlot K23, exhibited by TR Cattle Company of Glencoe, Oklahoma. Second place, back number 3760, WSCC VH Breathless 13K ET, owned by Andrew and Quentin Ray of Brooksville, Kentucky. Third place in that class goes to Ella Elizabeth Deford of Jarrettsville, Maryland. Fourth place, Jordan Mitchum of Vail, North Carolina. And fifth place, and congratulations, goes to Emma Pittstick of South Solon, Ohio. And the ring at this time is class 31, Pold Spring Yearling Females. This will be the last class of the Pold Spring Yearling Females. And then we will select your champion and reserve division champion. 
But congratulations, back in the Angus ring, results out of class 19. First place went to back number 10828. That's CNC Princess 2230, exhibited by Gavin Cool Layton, Edmond, Oklahoma. Second place in that class, go to back number 10824, EXAR Princess 2881, exhibited by Clara Sinclair of Williamsburg, Iowa. Third place in that class went to back number 10832, exhibited by Kyra Grace Meyer, Blue Hill, Nebraska. Fourth place went to Madison Collison of Rockwell City, Iowa. Fifth place in congratulations in class 19, going to Jelani King of Wacomas, Oklahoma. Sixth place will go to Anna, Anna Parr of Mason City, Illinois. Seventh place exhibited by Weston Haig of Plymouth, Indiana. In eighth place, and congratulations, we'll go to Luke Zimmerman, Camargo, Illinois. Now in the ring is Class 20 here for your Angus show.
Well, this is really difficult here, and I mean, it's a lot of fun to see heifers of this quality and kind, and you can go back and forth between these two females and justify placing them uh, either way. The differences that I see in this class is this heifer that wins is just so unique in the way that she's made and the way she goes around the ring. Uh, her, her structure, her uh, slope to her shoulder, her bone work, and just her overall presence and style uh, that she has. I see a touch more foot size. I like her toes a touch better uh, than I do the heifer in second, but this is awful close because I do see just a touch more upper hip in the heifer that's in second. I also like her udder development just a bit better than I do the heifer in first. So there's some give and take. I think this one, uh, her neck doesn't come up out of the top side of her shoulder quite as well. I do like her udder development. I would like to see her have a touch uh, bigger foot as I compare to the heifer that wins the class. But I think there's some give and take. You could justify it either way. I think those are two very, very high quality heifers that are very good. Then we come heifer here in third that when you first look at her by herself there's nothing wrong with this female either she's deep she's broody she's feminine in terms of her type and kind uh, here's one that maybe could just use freshened up just a hair trim a little bit of condition on her I don't see quite as much shape as I do in the cattle just above them then we have a heifer here that's really nice uh, looking from the side uh, she balances up fairly well just not quite as much cattle in the heifers that we see above her we got a heifer here coming next it's long really correct in her top line she's one that wants to just get a little bit flatter through her lower quarter but she does have a nice udder starting to develop under I think this could make a really nice cow then we got a heifer here coming next this one's got some length of body she's real correct in her top line I like her behind her hip again I'd like to see her just have a little more mid-rib depth then we got a heifer here uh, that uh, is going to complete the class this one's got a lot of pigment a lot of style a lot of presence again this one maybe runs into trouble just in terms of movement a little bit like to see a little more rear ribbon flank in this heifer i think a really good class of cattle and back over in the hereford ring your results from class 31 pold spring yearling females congratulations first place goes to back number 3775 ssf kkh 25w bell 211et owned by sarah sullivan of dunlap iowa Second place, back number 3779, BKCMCC Kalamazoo, 245 KET, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Third place goes to JW Teats of Lost River, West Virginia. Fourth place in that class, and congratulations, goes to Kaya Rhodes of Ada, Oklahoma. Fifth place goes to Atley and Aiden Kleinman of Wentworth, Missouri. Sixth place, Natalie Pitstick of South Solon, Ohio. And seventh place, and congratulations, goes to Adeline Grace Blankenship of West Burlington, New York. Up next, we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion and reserve Pold Spring yearling female. Here in the Angus ring, uh, there was never no question for Amy which heifer we were going to start with. Uh, we like a lot of things about this one, like her length, love the, the really good maternal Angus view she gives you from a profile here. She's really long down her top and long out her hips. She puts her feet down well. She traveled the free and easiest off her front end for Amy and I of this pair of females. That's why she logically was the class winner for Amy and I, but puts together a lot of things very nice, maybe just a little tucked in that form rib coming out of her chest but still just as a puts a lot of pieces together like Amy and I've been looking for today nice class winner the heifer in second I think logically falls her from a type and kind really good rib cage in this female a lot of balance when you see her out here from a profile heifer that's probably not quite as extended through her neck but she's still long enough clean enough through her neck as we get her in motion we wish she was just a little set back in the slope to her shoulder and her knee but still packs a lot of power when you get out behind her very female looking a nice heifer to be second the really stout female comes in next in line here and Amy and I really appreciate that this big bone female bounced a lot to this female and for Amy and I for an Angus female she might need toned down a little bit from a bone and mass and power point but this is a very high quality female with a good structure under her. maybe just a little heavier boned a little too massive and stout for Amy and I today the heifer that comes in next in line, <clears throat> not quite as stout as the heifer in front of her, 
good balance here, but she's a heifer for Amy and I. When we put her in motion, she sure needs to travel better off both uh, front and rear to get her any higher today. Young ladies heifer that comes in next in line, a very clean fronted, balanced female, maybe a little rigid in her spine. And again, I'd like to see her travel a little better off both ends to get her any higher today. Get down to a couple heifers that, uh, again, they got enough mass and power for these young people and, and you know, should have a bright future, but they both probably need a few uh, 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 alterations in their structure a little bit to get them any higher today. Well, we got some serious heat in the ring over here on the Hereford side, and this is just, this is what it's all about. I mean, these are really, really good, high-quality heifers. I know everybody in the stands probably has their favorites, and uh, I think all six of these heifers are extremely good. I never dreamed that we would see this kind of quality uh, when the day began in these older heifers. I think it's extremely tough. It's extremely challenging. Uh, we found some heifers in here and, and we sorted out through the differences in them and there's a lot of differences in the cattle but yet they're all very, very high quality. There's one that's pretty unique in here for us and we're gonna uh, show you which one we like to win this division but congratulations to you guys. Appreciate you bringing in these good cattle. And congratulations, your champion pulled spring yearling female comes out of class 31, goes to back number 3775, SSF KKH 25W Bell 211ET, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa. And congratulations, your reserve champion Pold Spring yearling female also comes out of class 31, goes to Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma with BKCMCC Kalamazoo 245KET. Once again, congratulations to all these Hereford exhibitors. We will move to our Horn Spring yearling females. Well, congratulations, back over in the Angus ring, results out of class 20. First place and congratulations will go to Quentin Day of Lovington, Illinois with Dameron C5, Nellie 2145. That was back number 10847. Second place in that class will go to back number 10838, exhibited by Sydney Pearl Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma with EXAR, Princess 2878. Third place in that class will go to Anna Johnson of Durand, Illinois with FCF, WHM Phyllis 258. Fourth place in that class exhibited by Allie Perry, Fayetteville, Tennessee. Fifth place exhibited by Classic Genetics of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Sixth place went to Haley Grace Walker of Potts Camp, Mississippi. And seventh place will go to Peyton Hartle of Arbuckle, California. Now in the ring, class 21 for the Angus Show. Really here in the Angus show, just an easy class winner for Amy and I from a balance standpoint, a lot of rib shape and dimension, maybe a little compact in her build compared to some of the other heifers out here, but still from a quality standpoint, smoothness of shoulder expanded in her fore rib, good down her top and out in the hip, a, a logical place to start this class. A little bit larger framed heifer comes next here in line with a good balance look in her, nice enough through her front end, maybe pushing just a little bit of chest. When you get her in motion, 
rotation, she wants to get just a little rigid in her spine and she sucks that rear flank just a little bit. As we come to the next heifer in line, long-sided female with some muscle down her top and out through her hip. A female for Amy and I maybe gets just a little plainer in her head and plainer in her chest. Uh, next heifer in line, a little more moderate heifer, but not the, near the performance in her. When you get her in motion, she gets just a little rigid in her spine. Well, congratulations back over in the Angus ring. Results out of class 21 before division two, senior heifer calves. First place exhibited by Alexis Coling of Bowling Green, Missouri with EXAR Frontier Gal 2869. That was back number 10855. Second place will go to back number 10857 WSCC Frontier Gal 02 KET exhibited by JC Wolfinger of Lexington, Nebraska. Third place in that class will go to Avery Edwards, Lawton, Oklahoma. Fourth place will go to Taylor Yoder of Alpha, Florida. Now in the ring, first and second to select a champion reserve out of Division II Senior Heifer Cavs. Quality keeps on coming here, and even though we only have two heifers in this class, uh, they're both extremely good. I just like the balance and the size of this heifer that wins this class. She gives me a really nice look from the side, especially right behind her shoulders. She's just dead level out of her top, really good in her hip. Love her hind leg and the way that she goes. Looks like she's going to have a really nice square uh, sort of butter building underneath her. I just think a really good high quality heifer there. I'd say the advantage maybe in shape might go to the heifer in second, and I see a little bit more pin width, a little bit more dimension down in her lower quarter. But with that, she kind of comes apart a little bit more behind her shoulders for me here today and doesn't balance up quite as well from the side as the heifer that wins the class. Here in the senior calf division, really a good set of heifers out here. A heifer that won the first class, just really loved the athletic ability of this female big body, really gives you a good broody female look from a profile here. She's good down her top on her hips. Not the longest sided one out here, but sure long enough. But just as probably for Amy and I, the most athletic of the heifers standing out here. Nice female. Heifer that won the second class again, we thought was the most athletic heifer in that class. A heifer again, good down her top, uh, long sided, a little bit longer than the heifer that won the class in front of her, maybe a little bit cleaner through her neck. Doesn't have near as much rib shape in the rear third of that body probably as the heifer right in front of her. Um, gentleman's heifer that won the third class, we thought won that class handily for Amy and I from a movement standpoint. Enough body in this female, one of the larger framed heifers out here, but good down her top and out her hip. She's a heifer that maybe just cu cuts in a little from her chest up into her forerib, but a, a nice complete female, a nice class one of their young ladies heifer that won the last class. Probably the most boxy female out here of our class winners, a little shorter sided, a little shorter stature, but it's still a lot of quality in the female. She's laid in at the point of her shoulder with enough rib shape and dimension. She's extended it enough up front, probably not as, as long necked as some of the other females out here, but a nice set of heifers. There is a heifer for Amy and I that we like in this division quite well. Amy will go pick her.
Well, congratulations in the Angus ring. Your Division Two Senior Heifer Calves champion will go to back number 10802, Selden Rest Sandy, 2210, exhibited by Josie Brooke Phillips, Maysville, Kentucky, and Circle M of Rockwall, Texas, coming out of Class 18. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 32, Horn Spring Yearling Females. Congratulations, first place went to entry 3941, EXR High Class Cat 2253 ET, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Second place went to entry 3939, PSC SCC Sweet Caroline 2030 ET, owned by Coven and Cobble Lewis of Ryan, Oklahoma. This time we've got class 33 horn spring yearling females in the ring. And congratulations in Division Two Senior Heifer Calves over here in the Angus Ring. Reserve champion comes out of the same class. Back number 10, 810, BRDG Pinup Gal 229, exhibited by Wyatt DeBerry of Alton, Texas. We're now going to bring in class 22 here in your next division. Just a single entry uh, August over here. Really a nice female. Uh, really like the presence she gives you when you get her on a profile hair. She sure built really nice through that head and neck, clean in her chest with enough rib shape and dimension. Uh, it'll just be interesting to see her back out here with the rest of the division when we get to that point. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring. Results out of class 22. First place, back number 10860, Diamond T 2180, Georgina, exhibited by Emma Grace Van Hoy of Richfield, North Carolina. Now in the ring, class 23 for the Angus Show. Again, we have two really high quality females here that are built similar, yet I just like the freshness and the overall look of this heifer that wins a class. I see enough more just to mention to this one by nature. She's certainly fresh in her design. I like the way she is uh, in her top line. She's just great in her hip. Travels around the ring really good, like the utter development on her. She lays in smooth in her shoulder, just a really high quality fault free one that we have there to win the class. Heifer that's in second is no slouch. I mean, this one's got a lot of depth of rib and body. She paints a really nice picture from the side. Young lady does an excellent job sticking this one. She always does. Uh, this one here just needs to be freshened up a little bit as I compare it to the class winner. I just see a little bit too much more uh, flesh underneath and uh, as I compare to the heifer that won, I just like the freshness of her. This is a good fresh one here that moves really sound uh, at the ground. I just like to stouten that one up a touch if I could give her a bit more bone then the heifer that comes next here's one that's got some length of body and extension she's pretty correct in her top line uh, where she runs into trouble for me is underneath I'd just like to give her touch more rib and volume the next two cattle coming up in line and the heifer that comes next I, I could move this one up just a little bit if I could change her foot size uh, her feet are just a little long and she gets a little shallow in her heel. I'd just like to change that foot size if I could and uh, I think that heifer could move up the line and touch. Same kind of goes for this heifer, but I didn't see quite as much presence and look in this one. Uh, but this heifer certainly got some quality, there's no doubt about it. I'd like to change her foot size and touch if I could as well, give her a little more depth of heel. But a really good class of heifers, really good fresh one to win. 
just a single entry here in your July class, but really a nice built female. She's long down her top and out her hip. When you get behind her, she doesn't disappoint you. A lot of width coming out of that top of that shoulder, carries that all the way back through her hooks and pins down into her stifle. Big rib cage in this female. Sure, feminine enough through her front end, and when you put her in motion, travels free and easy, covers the ground with ease. Uh, a lot to like about her. We'll see her when she gets back out here in division. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring, first place in Class 23H. And for those of you following along in your book, we had three three scratches in this class. So this will be a single entry, first place, Mercedes Faree, Sullivan, Indiana. Back number 10864. That's Connolly, DT, Sandy, 2900. Now in the ring, Class 24. And back over in the Hereford Ring, we've got your results from Class 33, Horn Spring Yearling Females. Congratulations, first place went to back number 3952, GKB 8688, 2296 Monroe, K110ET, exhibited by Dylan Cockcamp of Clayton, Indiana. Second place and congratulations goes to back number 3949, Collins Penny, owned by Claire Cricket and Sierra Collins of Chattanooga, Oklahoma. Third place in that class goes to Kendall and Hayes Devine of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Fourth place goes to Coven and uh, Coble Lewis of Ryan, Oklahoma. Fifth place, and congratulations, goes to Delaney Eaton of Ramona, Oklahoma. And sixth place goes to John Robert Dower of Panhandle, Texas. This time, we'll select your champion and reserved Horn Spring Yearling Female. Ready to complete another division here, and I think we got two uh, excellent cattle to look at and compare and, and contrast back and forth. Uh, uh, these two heifers are really high quality females. There's no question about it. The, the heifer that won that first class, well, she paints a really nice picture from the side, like her depth of rib and volume. I think it, she's gonna make an excellent cow. Uh, the heifer that uh, won that next division, uh, you talk about one that's got a lot of shape and power to her. Uh, mid rib and center and I just see a lot of outward turn to that one's rib cage big old hip in the heifer and uh, I think just a really nice female there that's very complete very fault free these are two excellent cattle I'll let crew show you the one that we like the best to win the division And congratulations, your champion Horn Spring Yearling Female comes out of class 33, goes to Dylan Cockcamp of Clayton, Indiana with GKB 8688, 2296 Monroe, K110ET. Here in the Angus Ring, a really a nice heifer to lead off this class with. Just so easy on the eyes to look at from a profile. Really good down her hop, top and square. She's very feminine through her front end. She's pulled apart in her fore rib. She's good down her hot top and hip. She moves with ease and she gives you a great look on the profile when she's walking. She carries herself really good. Nice class winner. Young man's heifer that comes in next in line. A, a, a nice heifer that has a lot of rib shape in her. She's a heifer that's built good enough through her shoulder and the way it goes down to the ground. She's strong out her hip with enough muscle. She's a heifer that gets probably a little coarser in her head compared to her class winner. When you get her in motion, doesn't carry her top and hip quite as good as a heifer that's going to win the class. And back over in the Hereford ring, your reserve champion, Horn Spring Yearling Female, came out of class 32. Congratulations to Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma, with EXR High Class Cat 2253 ET. Up next, we'll have class 34, pole junior yearling females. 
Well, congratulations back over in the Angus ring. Results out of class 24. First place to go to back number 10872, Seldom Rest, Sandy Joe, 2123, exhibited by Catherine Coleman, Modesto, California. Second place in that class will go to back number 10871, RJPF Rita, 266K, exhibited by Gentry Sullivan, Lawton, Oklahoma. Now in the ring is class 25. This will be your final class in our intermediate heifer division. Single entry heifer here it comes to us really in, in a nice package. Uh, this is a nice moderate frame female. It's certainly sound at the ground. Uh, I just think a really high quality individual. She doesn't come to us with a lot of extra condition. A uh, really nice heifer in this single entry class. And congratulations back over in the Hereford ring. Your results from class 34, pole junior yearling females. First place goes to entry 3783, PSCC SCC Rose 2006 ET, owned by Coble and Coven Lewis of Ryan, Oklahoma. Certainly got to admire the uh, power, presence, and shape of this one that comes in the ring. She's a big square-footed heifer. You lock her out of her hip, and she comes to you in a really three-dimensional look, uh, just a really high-quality female that you enjoy looking at from the side. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from Class, 20, class 35, pulled junior yearling females. Congratulations, first place goes to entry 3791, Stag Pearl 9KET, owned by Boan Graves of Chillicothe, Missouri. Next, we'll bring back those first place from class 34 and class 35 and select your champion and reserve champion pole junior yearling female. Only two cattle in this uh, division, and uh, I think we got two really nice females out here to evaluate. Uh, Cruz and I like one uh, quite a bit in this division. He'll go show you which one we like to win, and the other one is going to end up being reserved here today. Congratulations to you guys. And congratulations, your champion pole junior yearling female comes out of class 35, goes to Boan Graves of Chillicothe, Missouri. Did I just get that wrong? Yeah. And your reserve champion pole junior yearling female comes out of class 34. And congratulations to Coven and Coble Lewis of Ryan, Oklahoma.
nice set of heifers again here in the May class, but a heifer for Amy and I that just comes to the top handily for Amy and I. Puts together a lot of things extremely nice. Uh, really gives you this good balanced look here with a lot of shape and dimension to, the, to a rib. When you get out on a three-quarter angle of this female, the expression come out of the top of her spine in her rib cage is really good. How it comes out instead of goes down from her spine. She's good hip. She, got, she has a lot of muscle when you get out behind her. Really like the bone and the footwork in this heifer. And when you put her in motion, she reaches and travels real free and easy. The heifer that's going to come in next, a larger framed heifer. But for Amy and I, falls the type and kind of the first heifer, just not as neat. She's just a little coarser in her head and a little coarser in her shoulder than the heifer in front of her. But a really good rib cage in this female with a lot of power when you get out behind her. She travels free and easy enough. We got a really nice made heifer that comes in next here, alongside sided female. But honestly, for Amy and I, for her age, there just needs to be more of this female. She has a, a, a good body work and structure in her, but there, she's just too far behind from a performance standpoint and the amount of heifer there should be at this age. Gentleman's heifer that comes next in line has that extra body and muscle that the one in front of him probably doesn't have. She's still peeling through her front hand. When we put her in motion, she gets a little too rigid in her spine, doesn't reach off both ends like the heifers in front of her. As we go down the line here, heifers that we need to change their structure a little bit off their front end or maybe make a little more of them. Um, the heifer that comes in here with the gentleman with the cowboy hat, lot to this female, really stout, but just too coarse in her makeup for me. Well, congratulations in the Angus Ring. Results out of class 25 before the division. First place exhibited by Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio, with SSF Envious Blackbird 5022. That was back number 10890. Second place in that class, go to back number 10884. Three Aces, Georgina 5012, exhibited by Whitney Ann Meyer, Clinton, Tennessee. Third place in that class. We'll go to Josie Phillips of Maysville, Kentucky, and Circle M of Rockwell, Texas. Fourth place, and congratulations. We'll go to Wendell Custer of Cushing, Oklahoma. And fifth place, and congratulations. We'll go to Thomas Edward Holtz. Now in the ring, first and second, to select the champion reserve intermediate heifer. Nice class of cattle here. Again, hard to find one uh, for the bottom hole here as uh, good as the quality is. But this heifer that wins the class uh, does so for us fairly handily. She just balances so nice from the side. She's good behind her shoulders, levels out her hip, uh, goes really good on her feet and legs, laid in nice in her shoulder, really nice up and through her front end. The effort that's going to come here in seconds, a big, stout, broody sort of female. Uh, and at, when she first came in, I wanted to get on her a little bit for dipping in her loin uh, when she moved. But then the more I studied this female, 
Uh, we're going to let her get away with that today. I think this one's a little farther along in calf. I don't read her to have a problem in terms of structure uh, at all in her top line. She's got a long level hip. I think this is just a really broody, solid place uh, to go into second here. Again, these heifers have a lot of quality all the way down. This female's real correct in her top line, gives you a nice look from the side. Doesn't have quite the middle and quite the mid rib shape uh, that we see in the heifer just above her. I wanted to run this heifer on up a little bit higher when I first looked at her, and the longer I stopped and studied her, uh, she just wanted to come apart in her top a little bit too much for me today. She wants to get a little bit lazy right in the middle of her back, but I certainly like the bone work and the structure and the skeleton uh, underneath that this female has. Then we complete the uh, class with a real moderate, sensibly sized sort of heifer. Looks like she's going to have a tremendous uh, utter quality when it's all said and done. Just not quite enough cattle as we compare them to the heifers just above them today. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 36, Horn Junior Yearling Females. Congratulations. First place goes to entry 3962. BK Keep It Simple 259 KET, owned by Gunner and Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon. Second place goes to entry 3961, HBL Carmel 23 ET, owned by Claire Cricket and Sierra Collins of Chattanooga, Oklahoma. Third place and congratulations goes to Luke Hamlin of Weatherford, Texas. Fourth place, Towson Brazos Heck of Fitzhugh, Oklahoma. And fifth place, congratulations, Jacob Dower of Panhandle, Texas. Let's give these exhibitors a nice round of applause here in the intermediate division. I, I think we got a really nice set of heifers. Wasn't huge in numbers, but when you get back out here, the quality's really top notch in these females. The heifer that won the first class, an individual class, really a nice female. Long sided, long hipped female that's feminine enough through her head and neck. She's got enough rib shape to her. When you get out here in the profile, does she give you that wow factor that the heifers behind her do? She she probably doesn't. She's probably just a little shorter in her neck, plainer in her chest maybe a little bit, but this is still a really high quality female. It's just she's in division with a lot of really good females. The heifer that won the individual class behind her, very powerful build heifer, huge rib cage in this heifer. She's long sided, she's square. A lot of power in this female, female that's extended enough up front. When you get her in motion, she travels free and easy enough. With a little bit of extra mu muscle, she may not be quite as free and easy as another heifer out here, but a lot of good in this female. Um, just a lot of power built in that one. The heifer behind her, so elegant when you get her on the profile hair, so good down her top, so square built. She's very um, female through her front end, very elegant through her front end with extreme balance in her. She travels free and easy enough. Uh, when you get out behind her, is she as powerful as a couple of the other heifers out here? No. You just got to decide if she's powerful enough for you. She shows great balance and soundness and structural correctness. She just maybe is not quite as powerful as the heifers on either side of her. The heifer that won the last class, so balanced from a profile here. She's extended it enough through her front end. Good bone and good footwork on this female. She's long and square out her hip. She just puts a lot of things together really nicely. And when you put her in motion, she travels free and easy. Uh, for Amy and I, when we got out here and we got these back out here, there was a heifer that hit Amy and I really hard, is going to be our division winner, and then we're going to have to look a little harder for reserve. Thank you.
Well, congratulations, your intermediate heifer champion coming out of class 25. That'll be 10890 SSF Envious Blackbird 5022, exhibited by Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio. Well, we're going to leave these heifers just exactly like they came to us uh, in the lineup. Uh, the heifer that wins this class, uh, for me, does so fairly handily just because of her maternal look, her depth of rib, her body, her foot size, uh, the way she gets around the ring. I think just a really high-quality uh, cow prospect that also has some show ring presence. Same goes for the heifer in second. I think this heifer is very maternal in her look. As well, I like uh, her angles and the way she goes. I just don't see quite as much cattle as I do in the heifer just ahead of her, but that's an awful nice, high-quality female that's there in second. Heifer in third probably has the advantage in terms of bone work and just overall power at the ground uh, when you compare her to the rest of the cattle. She's the most different for sure. I just don't see quite as much maternal characteristics in this one. She's a little rounder ribbed. I'd like to give her the center body as the heifers that uh, are just ahead of her. Nice class of cattle. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 37, Horn Junior Yearling Females. Congratulations, first place went to back number 3963, CCJ295H Roxanne 352K, exhibited by Paisley Nelson of Platte City, Missouri. Second place goes to back number 3965, KLLTR111F Candy 10KET, owned by Madeline Grace Thompson of Amity, Missouri. And third place goes to Marilyn Pecky of Mino, Oklahoma. And we'll bring back your first and seconds and select your champion in reserved Horn Junior Yearling Female. Well, congratulations back in the Angus ring. Your reserve intermediate heifer comes to you from class 24. That's back number 10872. Seldom rest Sandy Joe 2123, exhibited by Catherine Coleman, Modesto, California. We're now going to bring in class 26 here in the Angus ring. We got another really good division of uh, horn females here, and I really like uh, the way this lineup comes together. I like all four of the cattle. Tremendous amount. I don't see the need to go through and, and uh, discuss them. We just talked about the cattle a little bit, but congratulations to you guys. These are awfully high-quality cattle that you've brought us to sort through. I'll let Cruz show you which one we like to win this division. And congratulations, your champion Horn Junior Yearling Female comes out of class 36, goes to Gunner and Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon with BK Keep It Simple 259 KET. And congratulations, your reserve champion, Horn Junior Yearling Female, comes out of Class 37. Goes to Paisley Nelson of Platte City, Missouri, with CCJ 295H Roxanne 352K. Up next, we've got Class 38, Pold Senior Yearling Females.
We got a really nice pair of cattle out here, a young cow that's certainly uh, doing a great job with a bull calf here. Bull calf's marked really well. He's got a lot of stoutness and power to him. I really like the squareness of udder of this cow. Uh, you look at how her udder's built and designed, and then she's so feminine up through her front end. This is just a really nice, solid pair here as a single entry. And back over in the Hereford ring, we've got your results from class 38, Pold Senior Yearling Females. First place and your champion, Pold Senior Yearling Female, went to back number 3796, Innisfail 4013124J, owned by Innisfail Farm of Madison, Georgia, P&J Farms of Monroe, North Carolina, and Dayridge Farm of Telford, Tennessee. Again, as we complete uh, this class um, 39, here's a really nice cow. Uh, it's very, very useful. She's nice size. She's got some depth of rib and body by nature. She doesn't come to us with a lot of condition on her. What I really like about this one is her angles. She's really nice uh, slope to her shoulder and the way that she gets out and goes really smooth in her joints. I really like the way she is from her hock down to the ground, especially on the move. Got a nice bull calf that's got some look to him as well. Uh, really nice single entry here in this cow-calf division. And back over in the Hereford ring, your results from class 39, Horn Senior Yearling Females. First place and your champion Horn Senior Yearling Female went to entry 3968, Purple Eleanor 125J, owned by Jetty Funderburg of Stephenville, Texas.
Well, back over here in the Hereford ring, we're going to start your champion drive in the polled female show. Once again, as these females enter the ring, please go ahead and give them a big round of applause as we thank all of our Hereford exhibitors today. We'd also like to thank our judges, Mr. Kyle Collier and Cruz Collier. So once again, please give them a big round of applause for all their help and time that they've spent with us here today. And just a reminder to all of our all of the you watching, whether online or in person, we will select in between the polled and horned female drive the 2024 Hereford Herdsman of the Year. Here in the class of April heifers, they're really a good group of heifers. I think we got a really good trio up here on top. The, the heifer Amy and I are going to start with. We just love the the reverse balance she gives you. How she appears deeper in the rear third of that rib cage than she does in her chest and her fore rib. But she's built so good through there. She's very feminine up front. But for Amy and I, the way this heifer won the class is we think this is absolutely the soundest heifer of the three heifers getting around the class. She has that big body. She's square out to her hip. She's laid in it in the blade of that shoulder. She's got a good head and she just travels freer and easier. Uh, I think it was a logical place for Amy and I to start. We like the way this heifer in second kind of follows her in class. That big rib cage. She's probably not quite as large a framed heifer, but there's a good rib cage in her. She's probably just a, a little plainer in her chest and the heifer's going to win the class. Probably doesn't have quite the rear third of body, but she travels free and easy and she's really square. This young lady gets this heifer in third, put together in a profile, and gives us a great look. Uh, just on the standstill, this is probably our winner of the class. What happens when we get her in motion? She's just a little more upright in that shoulder, a little straighter in that knee. So consequentially, she just doesn't reach like the two heifers in front of her. If we could get that out of her, she probably wins the class. The heifer that's going to come in next in line I think logically comes in here from a rib shape and a soundness standpoint when we get her in a profile here she just gets a little plainer than the heifers in front of her I think she's pushing a little more condition so she gets a little chestier she's a heifer that just maybe has a little bit of waist in her underline but from a muscle standpoint a rib shape with some soundness logically there really like this heifer that came in next in line and Honestly, when they were first set up on a profile, I thought this was one of the couple heifers that would win this class. A lot to like about this heifer, the, the depth and symmetry to the middle of her rib, the way she carries it in each flank. She's laid in good at the point of her shoulder. She has enough muscle in her. She sure extended enough up front. Again, when we get her in motion, like to see her just a little more flexible off both ends, a little more reach. Big bodied heifer comes in next in line. Big bone, good foot under this female. Gets a little out of balance as you get her in a profile here with a little more chest in her, cut up a little more in her flank. Travels free and easy enough. Next heifer in line, really long-sided heifer with big bone and big foot. She's a heifer for Amy and I. Gets just a little coarser in her makeup. She's a little coarser headed and quarter, coarser chested. Maybe not quite the center body of some of the other heifers. Larger framed heifer comes in next in line here. A lot of rib shape and dimension in this heifer. She carries that depth into both flanks, but as you get her in motion, just needs to work to be freer off both ends. A little bit of structure issues in these next three heifers that need change to get them any higher. Well, real quick, before we go back to the pulled drive, your results at o'clock 26 in the Angus Ring, first place, exhibited by Samia Wilt of 
Homer, Michigan with Seldom Rest, Sandy, 2078. That's back number 10, 893. Second place in congratulations will go to Cato Craft of Anadarko, Oklahoma, back number 10, 894. Third place exhibited by Olivia Jones, Herod, Ohio. Fourth place went to Catherine Coleman. Fifth place in congratulations, Gabrielle Tebow. Sixth place. Exhibited by Cal Cook, Lindsay, Oklahoma. Seventh place in that class, Blake Freeman. Eighth place in congratulations, we go to Garrett Hansacker. Ninth place was exhibited by Camden Upchurch. Tenth place in that class, we'll go to Ruth Wyatt. And eleventh place, we'll go to Carter Hogue. Now in the ring, class 27H. Well, this is uh, what it all comes down to, and this is what it's all about right here. I mean, these cattle are good. I told Cruz just a second ago, we were just standing there along the wall. I said, man, these things are good, aren't they? He said, yeah. I mean, it's been tough. This is, this is exceptional. And I, I mean, when you start down here with a heifer calf that's built like that, and another one, and another one, and another one, you just go on down the line. These cattle are just tremendous, and it's been, it's been a great opportunity for us to be here, and uh, I want to thank you all for bringing the cattle. I know it's hard. Uh, showing cattle is not easy. Cruz got into showing pigs because it was easier, I think. He liked, to, uh, he liked the pig job uh, just a little bit better, a lot less tack, no blowing. There's a lot of upside to that for sure. So. Uh, I commend you uh, cattle exhibitors and all the work, the time, and the effort that it takes to come uh, to one of these shows. <clears throat> now I'm going to try to get through saying a couple things. Last week was really hard for all of us in the entire uh, cattle industry. and. Uh, my uh, thoughts are still with Jennifer and Ryan and Taylor and the entire family and uh, the Express Ranch family and crew. Uh, attended the funeral last week and when I left that day, <clears throat> a lot like Donnie said, we all had an extreme uh, sense of friendship for some reason when that, when that day ended and we left. <clears throat> there was a lot of us that had that feeling. We enjoyed listening uh, to the speakers, and when we left that day, I think we all had a sense of uh, that we need to reach out to our friends a little bit more, talk to them, because you never know what might happen. And uh, me personally, I reached out to a couple of my friends uh, <clears throat> from home and thanked them for their friendship, and I think it's a good idea that we all do that. <clears throat> And I've been standing here looking at this picture of Gerald for the last two days, and it's tough. But we got to go on, and we got to quit mourning, and we got to move on. And the, probably over an 85% reason why we're here today, along with the staff that put this show on, but a big reason we are here and standing in this ring is Gerald Callahan. And so at this time, and this show is dedicated to him, I'd like us all to stand, get up out of your seats, and instead of having a moment of silence for Gerald Callahan, let's have a moment of loudness for Gerald Callahan and give that man a big hand. Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Let's go show them which one we like.
And congratulations, your grand champion polled female comes from polled senior heifer calf, and congratulations to Madeline Norvell of Tuttle, Oklahoma, with NCC Rhea 2058 ET. Once again, congratulations to Madeline, and give her a big round of applause. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion polled female goes to Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa with SSF KKH 25W Bell 211 ET. Once again, let's give all of these polled exhibitors a big round of applause as they exit the ring. And again, thank you all exhibitors for being here and everybody in the background that helps make this possible. Back over in the Hereford ring, we've got a special presentation this afternoon. As we announce the American Hereford Association 2024 Herdsman of the Year. This year's nominees, we have five nominees. They are as follows. Breck Dedman of Innisfail Farms of Madison, Georgia. Melissa Grimmelshockey of Grimmelshockey Cattle Company of Manhattan, Kansas. Ty Krebs of Krebs Ranch and Krebs Cattle Company of Gordon, Nebraska. Carter St. John of Dry Creek Farms of Pell City, Alabama, and Clayton Weatherly of Ella Weldon Cattle Company of Perry, Oklahoma. Let's go ahead and give all of these nominees one big round of applause before we name your 2024 Hereford Herdsman of the Year. And without further ado, your 2024 Hereford Herdsman of the Year is Melissa Grimmelshockey of Grimmelshockey Cattle Company. Born and raised in Maryland on her family's grain farm, Melissa paved her way as a first-generation cattlewoman. Her passion, drive, and love for the breed led her to an extremely successful junior show career, winning several national champion honors, including show heifer and bull of the year awards. In 2016, Melissa graduated from Kansas State University with dual degrees in agricultural communications and animal sciences and industry. During college, Melissa and Shane began dedicating their efforts to building a herd of their own. Proven cow families are the core of their operation where they prioritize structural integrity, maternal ability, with the expectation that their cattle will thrive in multiple environments and facets of the industry, from the show ring to real world beef production. With Shane traveling a majority of the year, Melissa manages their intensive AI, ET, and IVF programs. She constantly studies leading genetics to produce high quality females and bulls for junior members and purebred and commercial producers. Along with devoting time to the daily care of sale and show cattle, Melissa handles the overall nutrition, health, calving, and marketing of their genetics. In December 2021, the couple established Operation Headquarters for Grimmel Shockey Cattle Company. Since putting a stamp on a herd and, and place they built together, Melissa and Shane have achieved success by being named Premier Hereford Breeder at both the 2022 and 2023 American Royal, winning division titles at the Junior National Hereford Expo, American Royal, NAILE, Cattlemen's Congress, and most notably, raising the reserve grand champion polled female at both the 2020 and 2023 National Western Stock Show. One of Melissa's core values is not only raising quality livestock, but giving back and helping junior members both in and out of the show ring. She focuses on providing superior customer service, assisting junior members in strengthening their skills with showmanship, clipping, fitting, feed management, and livestock evaluation. Melissa is grateful for the friends and fellow breeders who helped, guided, and supported her along the way. She feels blessed to be a part of the Hereford breed and is honored to be nominated as a candidate for Hereford Herdsman of the Year. Once again, congratulations, Melissa. Melissa is awarded with the iconic Hereford Herdsman buckle. 
Please come together to the center of the ring for a picture as we award you for your commitment to the Hereford breed as you carry on the herdsman tradition. And once again, let's give her one big round of applause for this prestigious honor. And Melissa, wherever you are, since I didn't get to announce the Hereford ring today, congratulations. She's a great person and a great cattlewoman. Really proud of you. Here in the Angus side in this March class, we're going to start with a really nice pair of heifers. Um, heifers that are just built really good when you get them on a profile. They're really deep in the center of that rib cage, and they carry that depth uh, to their fore rib and to their rear flank. They're heifers that are laid in good at the point of their shoulder. They're heifers that are good down their top and down their hip. I do think the heifer that's going to win the class is the more powerful female. She's probably a little more expanded in her fore rib than the heifer that's going to come right behind. Her. I think they both are very sound as they go about the ring. I think it's a nice pair of heifers, a nice way to start off this class. Like I said, the heifer that comes in second here, I think, could just be pulled apart a tick more in her heart to smooth her out coming out of her blade into her rib cage than the heifer in front, but it's a really good pair. Next heifer that comes in line, bigger frame kind of heifer, but a heifer with a lot of good in her. Extended up front, she's sound as she goes about the ring. She's a heifer to me as you view her in amongst her hair. She probably gets just a little piecey in her makeup. Again, probably a little more restricted in her heart. Definitely a little different coming out of that upper shoulder into her spine. Maybe drops there a little bit. But this is a big bone, big footed female that moves around the ring sound enough with a lot of rib cage and a lot of muscle in her. Just a, a, a very nice female. Really an eye appealing nice female comes next in line here. She's good down her top with plenty of muscle in her. This young lady gives you a good look when she gets her put together. I don't think she's quite as extended through her front end as the heifer right in front of her, but what really decides this for me, I think this is probably of the top four heifers, the shallowest built heifer from her mid rib back. I'd like to see, especially when she gets on the move, just a little more rear rib in this female compared to some of them in front of her. Uh, the next heifer in line, uh, a big old stout female, gives you a good look on a profile here. Starts getting a little waist in the lower third of that body, gets a little more chest in her little navel, but a, a good top female with a lot of balance when this young lady gets her put together. Uh, the, the heifer that's next in line, uh, extremely similar to the one right in front of her, pushing a little bit extra chest, but got a good rib cage in her with a lot of muscle in her. I'd like to probably free her up off both ends as we go. Then as we go on down the line here, some heifers that just need to be a little more structurally correct to get them higher today. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Angus Ring, results of class 27. Before we select your Division I junior yearlings, first place, go to Jake Allison, Yukon, Oklahoma, with EXAR Princess 2717. That's back number 10926. Second place, we'll go to back number 10918. That's Colburn, Sarah's Dream. 2518, exhibited by Houston Faree Sullivan, Indiana. Third place was exhibited by Braden Dell Bartlow, Monticello, Illinois. Fourth place in that class, and congratulations, Chancey Clark, Muldrow, Oklahoma. Fifth place went to Ava Grace Wood, Willow Springs, North Carolina. Sixth place, and congratulations, will go to Cassidy Eagleberg, Berger of Elkland, Missouri. Seventh place, and congratulations, Mackenzie Nutson, Rid. Ridgeland, Wisconsin. Eighth place was exhibited by Alexia Stevens, Allendale, Illinois. Ninth place will go to Redlands Community College, El Reno, Oklahoma. Now in the ring, we'll bring those first and seconds in. Select a champion reserve in Division One of your junior yearlings.
And back over in the Herfin ring, we've got all your division champions and reserve division champions. As our judges select your grand champion horned female and reserve champion uh, horned female. Once again, thank you to our judges, Mr. Kyle Collier and Cruz Collier of Bruno, Idaho. Let's give them one more big round of applause for spending their time with us here at the Cattlemen's Congress. And once again, congratulations to all of these Hereford exhibitors and breeders for all of the hard work they've put in. Well, this is uh, the last time um, that I will be addressing you guys here today. I appreciate everybody uh, for being here and bringing the cattle to us. Uh, always have a great crowd here uh, to watch the show. And, and this is just uh, Cruz and I's opinion. These cattle are tremendously good. We could see things getting flopped around lots of different ways. There's more shows. And good luck to you guys on down the road there's a lot more shows this spring and fall uh we're judging them how they are today and how we see them today and, and what we what we like uh the list is long honestly of the people that i need to thank for for being here today obviously the hereford association uh, and the board of directors and and the cattlemen's congress what a great job you guys do putting on this show. It's a it's a, an event and a, a destination, and like they say, it's a cattle it's a show that's ran by cattlemen for cattlemen. And I commend them for the job that they do and the show that they put on here. Uh, I've enjoyed working with Cruz. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and. Uh, He's like a little rat terrier out here. He's like right on my hip all the time, it seems like. And when he goes to pick one, I know yesterday a lot of people were laughing about him and his slaps. But I tell you what, this kid's enthusiastic, and he loves this. And, and it's really neat for me to see. And we have a lot of fun together. And uh, so I appreciate him being here. And... Uh, the job that he's done. And I, I was gonna say, I think the key to being a good dad is to accept the judging job at a major national show. Because he was up about an hour before his alarm went off yesterday, was dressed already before, and he got in the shower, and he brushed his teeth, and he had everything all ready to go before the alarm even went off yesterday. But he's enthusiastic, he has a lot of fun, I enjoy his opinion, and it's been a lot of fun to have him. Uh, I've got a daughter at home that, that I'm tremendously proud of. She's really smart, she is an honor student, and uh, wants to pursue a degree, and in the medical field and she gets nearly a 4.0 and we went to an honor society meeting uh, the other day and I told her that's the first time I've ever been to one of those and probably gonna be the last with this one right here because he struggles on that uh, end of things but he loves the cattle. I'd like to thank my mom and dad. Uh, my dad's here. My mom's home uh, with our nine year old grandpa and so they're probably watching online hoping I can get through this I know when uh, my grandma passed away the family wanted me to get up and say some things and I said no way I'm not gonna do it well why not well it's because I have a hard time getting the words out so I chickened out and I taped that or recorded it and made him do that. And I'm thinking at the end of these shows, that's what I'm gonna start doing is just recording it and then having him play the recording. But it's been a huge pleasure for us to be here. Thanks to the exhibitors mainly. Uh, thanks for bringing us the cattle, having the confidence in us to sort through them. We're gonna take one quick look at them and uh, we're gonna select you a champion in reserve. Thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure for us to be here.
And congratulations, your grand champion horn female goes to Gunner and Fallon Gore of Madras, Oregon with BK Keep It Simple 259 KET. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion horn female goes to Dylan Cockcamp of Clayton, Indiana with GKB 8688, 2296 Monroe, K110ET. Once again, congratulations to all of these Hereford exhibitors as they exit the ring. Let's give them one more big round of applause for all of their hard work and commitment. Here in the Angus ring, and I always think you show respect when they're picking champions and I shouldn't be talking then but really a nice uh, pair of heifer class winners out here there's sure some differences in my admit that but it's a really good group of four heifers out here I think there's a lot of quality the heifer that won the first class uh, Amy and I like how well structured this heifer is she's really sound as she goes about the ring she's really feminine through her front end and her head and neck she's good down her top she's not as powerful built when you get out behind her as the heifer that won the second second class, but really a nice sound female puts a lot of things together very nicely. The heifer that wins the second class, one of the more powerful built heifers when you stand behind her and look down her top and out through her hip and into her stifle we've seen today. Tremendous rib cage and balance in this female. When they get her put together here, she just makes such a nice brood cow picture. Is she as extended as the one that won the class up front or is neat in her chest? No, but from their back, she's so powerful built that I really respect that. She's laid in good at the point of her shoulder. A lot of good in this female. Amy and I are going to take one more look and then we'll get you a grand in reserve. Thank you. <laughs> 